Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. American Comics. The Concept of Gods, Starting from God Rewards Those Who Work Hard. Chapter 41. When he came to the Academy of Magic, Aaron suddenly had an unspeakable emotion. This is the place where he started to try to change his destiny. When he first came, he just wanted to survive on the big stage in the future. But he didn't realize it. It was because of his decision to learn magic that he took another path. After a few days, he transformed from a rookie who had just completed his warrior training to an Asgard war hero and a magic genius. I have to say that sometimes fate is so joking. But this result is good. Aaron was very glad that he gave up the warrior assessment and became a magic apprentice instead. If it weren't for that change, he might still be an elite guard guarding the Golden Hall at this moment, waiting for Ragnarok's arrival with many cannon fodder. Just when Aaron was standing at the door, Many magic apprentices passing by had already surrounded him. They have recognized Aaron's identity. Oh my god, I'm not mistaken, he is Aaron, the magical genius who has been discussed recently. It is said that only a few days after he entered the Academy of Magic, he joined Prince Thor in conquering the Vanaheim rebels and won supreme glory. I really envy his ability. I heard that he is still a powerful and brave fighter. He is simply an all-rounder. He he he, Aaron doesn't have a woman yet. I don't know if I can take him down with my charm. Even if I can't become a powerful magician or a glorious warrior, it would be great if I could be a hero's wife. Being able to give birth to the son of a hero. God, I can't take it. Go to bed and sleep, you still want to be Aaron's wife. You don't even look in the mirror. It's only me that has a chance. Don't think about it. When you reach the level of Sif, think about it. The hero's wife is destined to be not an ordinary person. Not always. What are you doing? Why don't you hurry up and study? Do you think you are a magic genius? While the female apprentices were discussing around Aaron, a majestic female voice came from a distance. It was Irene who came. When the female apprentices saw Irene, they scattered like a mouse seeing a cat, and went to the classroom honestly. The familiar scene made Aaron laugh out loud. It seems that no matter where it is, the teacher is the natural enemy of the students. Aaron, here you come. After coaxing away the female apprentice, Irene came to Aaron and looked at him with complicated eyes. Aaron has completely surpassed her. Eileen was extremely proud to be his teacher. From her hands, a record-breaking magical monster appeared. A strong man who turned from a magic apprentice to a war hero in just one week. Just as she expected, Aaron used magic to change the people of Asgard's view of magician. Although this change is not thorough enough, it is finally seeing hope. I believe that with Aaron's ability, the status of magicians will be significantly improved in a short time. Hello, teacher Aaron. Aaron said hello. To him, Irene was bull. Perhaps changing any magic teacher can stimulate his gold finger, but the reality is that Irene was his first teacher, not others. Irene smiled when she heard the words, suddenly thought of business, and then pulled Aaron inside. Aaron, you came just in time. It seems that Thor has told you that the Queen of Heaven is going to accept you as a disciple. Now she is waiting for you, come with me. When Aaron and Irene rushed to where Frigga was, the atmosphere in a classroom of the Academy of Magic was a bit dull. In the huge classroom, there are only one man and one woman. The woman was dressed in a gorgeous long dress and had long golden hair. She is the wife of Odin, Frigga, queen of Asgard. Under the dignified and quiet appearance, she is still a powerful witch. Beside her, is Loki. At the moment, Loki has been depressed for a long time about accepting Eren as his apprentice. He had a hunch that Eren's magic skills would surpass him soon. After all, Eren's ability is too terrifying and beyond compare. Mother, why did you accept Aaron as a student? Didn't you allow him to learn from other teachers? Loki said slightly dissatisfied. Aaron is different. He is a magical monster. In addition to needing a good teacher to teach him, he also needs someone to guide him. Make good use of his abilities to help you and your big brother protect Asgard and the peace of the Nine Realms. Frigg said calmly. But. Dot why does it have to be you? You never took anyone else as a disciple before. Loki was not happy with this answer. Regarding this matter, apart from worrying that Eren would completely surpass him in magic, he also felt uncomfortable that Eren wanted to separate his teachings from Frigga. Loki is envious of Eren's ability, 
jealous that he has received attention and recognition that he has never received, and is also hostile to Aaron who is about to become Frigga's second disciple. Before that, he was the only disciple of Frigga. Frigga saw that Loki was a little emotional, and she patiently said, Loki, Aaron is not only a magical genius, but also made great contributions. As a king, he must show something. I am responsible for teaching him, which is part of the expression. You and Thor were born to be kings, so you must learn to distinguish between rewards and punishments, and know how to use them well. Aaron has made a contribution, we have to reward him, and we can't dismiss him casually. Even if it's not Aaron this time, but someone else, the result will be the same. Aaron's magical ability is unheard of. We need to guide him well so that he can become your most powerful assistant in the future. I think, with your intelligence, it should be easy to understand. Loki nodded, how could he not know Frigg's painstaking efforts? But, born to be king. He used to believe it, but now he doesn't believe it, or half believes it. Odin's preference for Thor is barely concealed. Thor has gained much more than him. Whether it is strength or weapons, Thor is more than stronger than him. Judging by Odin's attitude, the future king of Asgard will only be Thor. Unless he can prove to Odin that he has more potential to be king than Thor. Thinking of this, Loki couldn't help asking in a low voice, My queen, am I really born to be a king? Frigga said without thinking, Yes, you were born to be a king. Only, not the king of Asgard. Seeing Loki like this, Frigga wanted to tell him the truth, but Odin said that now is not the time. So I can only keep hiding it. When the time comes, Loki will understand their painstaking efforts. After getting Frigg's affirmative answer, Loki was relieved a little, and the desire to prove it became stronger in his heart. He wants to prove to everyone that he, Loki, is more suitable to be king than Thor. Even without Thor, he can lead the people of Asgard to peace. The air fell into a brief silence. Not long after, Aaron's voice came from outside the door. Days later, Aaron is here. Then, the man Loki envied and hated walked in. And smiled at him, hello, Loki. Hello, Aaron. Loki responded with a forced smile, almost mad inside. He regards the opponent as one of the strongest competitors, but the opponent has no idea of him as an opponent at all. This sense of huge amounts of drop made Loki even more aggrieved. But thinking of the identities of both parties, Loki's smile became a little more sincere. HMPH, so what if you are a magical evildoer, so what if you become the number one magician in the Nine Realms? I am the son of Odin, the future king of Asgard, but you are just an ordinary magician, and you can only submit to me. No matter how strong you become, you still have to obey my orders in the end. Ha 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 ha. Eren naturally didn't know what Loki was thinking, but was just surprised by Loki's, sincere, smile. In his impression, since learning magic, Loki hasn't really shown him a good face, always trying to suppress him intentionally or unintentionally. However, today it looks like he has taken fake medicine. Could it be that he is stupid? Aaron, you are here. I have heard the name of a magic genius before. Irene told me about you on the first day you entered school. At that time, I didn't believe that someone was exaggerating that much. Now that I think about it, I was wrong. Your ability is even more shocking than what Irene said. Frigga walked forward slowly, carefully sizing up Aaron, this handsome Asgard new generation genius, who gave her many surprises. She is not stingy with praise, and under the double halo of the son of a hero and the magic monster, she loves Aaron very much. The diva deserves the prize. Compared to Thor and Loki, I'm still far behind. Aaron said humbly. Frigga is very satisfied with Aaron's answer. After gaining great glory and magical ability far surpassing Superman, he still maintains his true heart and is not conceited. It can be seen that Aaron is not only superior in ability, but also has a very high emotional intelligence. He is indeed the son of a hero. Ability and intelligence are so dazzling. Don't be humble, Aaron, your performance and ability are obvious to all. Odin also praised you in front of me many times. He said that Manning gave birth to a good son, and he will gain more glory in the future. He must be a legendary hero of Asgard in the future. He even said that when you finish learning Asgard's magic and make more contributions, he will consider bestowing blessings. By then, you will become the new god of magic in Asgard. 
Frigga's words fell into the ears of everyone present and set off a huge wave. They had thought that both Frigga and Odin praised Eren's ability and bravery, and they also thought that there were other rewards. But they never imagined that Odin had such high expectations for Eren. He even made a promise to the god of magic. That is a real god name. In the tens of millions of years, there are very few beings with the name of gods born in Asgard. After years of war, numbers declined further. Up to now, the number of god-named beings remaining in Asgard is no more than the number of hands. Although Asgard belongs to the Esir Protoss and is called a god by the people on Earth, in fact, most of the Asgards are not real gods. Generally, only members of the royal family and those most trusted by Odin can have the name of a god and walk as a god. For example, Thor Thor, the guardian god Heimdall and so on. And now, Eren has been promised in advance that he will receive the title of God of Magic and become a real god. And the God of Magic. This is a god name that is not inferior to the name of Thor. You know, the last god of magic was Odin himself. According to this, one can even boldly guess that Odin himself already believes that Eren's magic ability surpasses him, and one day he will replace him as the most powerful magician. God. This is simply the coldest joke in the millennium. Compared with the god of magic, the number one magician in the Nine Realms is a hammer. Loki's smile froze, while Irene smiled brightly. Her guess came true. Eren really had the potential to be the greatest magician, and, as she thought, the new god of magic. His ability has been affirmed by the king of god. His future is destined to be bright. Not to mention Loki and Irene, even Eren himself was incredible. How could Odin promise him the god of magic so easily? Outrageous, outrageous. Did Odin think he was as loyal to him and to Asgard as Heimdall? Oh, right. I was originally a son of a hero, one of Thor's best friends. Eren quickly remembered his identity. Strictly speaking, he did have the possibility of gaining Odin's trust. Perhaps Odin has branded himself a follower of Thor, like the three warriors and Sif. If Hela hadn't appeared, the three warriors must have been the three commanders of the Asgard army, assisting Thor in maintaining the stability of the Nine Realms. And Eren will also assist Thor in the name of the god of magic in the future. Thinking about it this way, everything makes sense. Eren has lived in Asgard for a thousand years, if there was a problem, it would have been discovered long ago. Now with Superman's ability and Jen Jungmaohong's label, it's too normal to be wooed by Odin. What's more, it's just a promise now. When will he finish learning magic and make more contributions, can he truly receive the blessing of Odin, and walk among the gods in the name of the god of magic? All thoughts were fleeting, Eren thanked Frigga, and said that he would live up to the king of gods expectations in the future. Frigga smiled and nodded, Eren, you must work hard. The god king and I are looking forward to your growth. Thor and Loki also need your magic assistance. Please don't worry about Tiano. Eren replied immediately. Sure enough, Frigga and Odin's calculations were crackling. It's hinting at what Eren should do so soon. Eren even suspects that even if he doesn't have so many credits in the future and doesn't learn all the magic, as long as he follows Thor's footsteps and has no second thoughts, then he must be the god of magic. In addition, Frigga said it in front of Loki and Irene, even if Odin did not fulfill his promise, Thor will definitely know about it when he takes over, and he will replace Odin to give Eren the title of God of Magic. By people's hearts. Although getting in touch with Thor was one of Eren's plans, and he didn't really regard Thor as a brother who shared life and death, but he didn't dislike Thor during this period of getting along. Thor is really good to friends, and he won't show it like that to outsiders. Ego. If possible, Eren wouldn't mind bringing Thor to the top without compromising his own interests. But if he is to offer loyalty to Thor and exist for Thor, that is naturally impossible. In fact, he was a little afraid to get too close to Thor. Because Thor is too miserable. Get too close to him and you'll be dead man. The three warriors died in battle one after another, Loki died to save him, Frigga and Odin also died, Asgard was destroyed, the clansmen died two or three big cats and kittens, his girlfriend Jane also died of cancer. Although Eren has gold finger to cover the bottom line, Marvel's waters are too deep, and no one dares to say that he is the winner until the last moment. He will help Thor, but also consider the situation. So it is doomed to live up to the wishes of Frigga and Odin. Eren doesn't feel too guilty about that. 
Humans always have selfishness. Nor did he have the will to die for others. For the name of a god of magic, it is not worth giving up his freedom and life. Frigga didn't know what Eren was thinking, and she was extremely satisfied with Eren's answer. Eren, since you are already my student, the content of the first class is up to you to decide. What do you want to learn? Eren replied without hesitation. My queen, I want to learn invisibility magic. You want to learn invisibility magic. You have a good eye, it's a very practical magic. After listening to Eren's request, Frigg immediately entered the teaching mode. Invisibility magic, like illusion magic, is a kind of auxiliary magic, but don't underestimate it. Once you master it, it can make you a ghost in the battlefield. In terms of specificity, it is no worse than illusion magic. I think, with your illusion magic attainments, you can imagine the importance of invisibility magic. Aaron nodded, he naturally knew the horror of invisibility magic. With his invisibility magic, Loki can swagger and try to pick up Mjolnir under the strict control of S.H.I.E.L.D. He also often cooperates with illusion magic to play Thor and others. If it weren't for Loki's hilarious role, often, forgetting, to use magic, he wouldn't always be deflated. At least, he won't be beaten and can escape smoothly every time. The old Loki faked his death to trick Thanos, and it was also two kinds of magic that were used in conjunction. Obviously, this kind of magic has been practiced to the depths, and it can even fool the gem bearer. After using the invisibility magic, you can hide your figure and deceive others' vision. If you can cultivate to a deeper level, you can even hide all the information including smell and temperature. No matter how advanced the technology is, you won't be able to understand it. Aaron, you should know about Heimdall's all-seeing eye. I know, his all-seeing eye can find anyone or anything he wants, and he can even see through all disguises until he finds the target. Aaron simply stated what he knew about the all-seeing eye. The all-seeing eye can be described as a rather buggy ability. With Bifrost, it can exert its star-killing combat power. Asgard uses the all-seeing eye to know many secrets without leaving home, maintain the stability of the Nine Realms, and prevent other countries from taking the lead easily. Because they all know that under Heimdall's eyes, there is almost no way to hide. The all-seeing eye is a very powerful ability, but the invisibility magic can hide it from him. Frigga reveals a shocking secret. Eren is not surprised by this either. Because of this, Loki has done it many times. How else would he hook up with Jotunheim's Frost Titan? Moreover, the stealth spaceship of the Dark Elves was almost hidden from Heimdall, but their stealth technology was not as strong as that of Loki, and Heimdall finally noticed it. Speaking of invisibility magic, Loki's invisibility magic attainment has reached a very high level, so let Loki demonstrate it for Eren. Frigga signaled Loki to come forward to demonstrate. At the moment, only Eren, Loki and Frigg are present. When Frigga began to give a formal lecture, Irene left the classroom knowingly. Although she is a magic teacher, it is inconvenient for her to stay when Tiano is teaching in person. As for Loki, he simply watched Eren study. He knew that Eren's magical abilities were exaggerated, but had never seen it in person. Therefore, he wanted to see if it could make every teacher doubt life is rumored. At this time, when Frigga asked him to demonstrate, Loki reluctantly stood up and cast the invisibility magic. In the next instant, Loki disappeared from the sight of the two of them. Invisible. Eren carefully noticed Loki's location, but obviously, it was impossible to find Loki's location with naked eyes, hearing and smell. The best way to find out where Loki is will be through magic. Ordinary technological means cannot detect Loki's location. Loki, who was invisible, looked at Eren who was looking for him, and finally showed a smug smile. Magic monster, right, it's not impossible to crack my invisibility. Loki's achievements in invisibility magic can be regarded as the first person in Asgard. He can fool Thor and even Frigga, and maybe only Odin can find Loki's location without using other means. At the moment, seeing Eren finally deflated, Loki became very playful, relying on others not being able to see him. He quietly walked towards Eren, wanting to play tricks on him. It is worth mentioning that Loki in the stealth state has been able to control the sound of walking to a level that is difficult for the ear to distinguish. Coupled with the lack of dust and other objects on the ground, Eren has no way of knowing Loki's movements. But he also knew Loki's temperament. 
In order to prevent possible teasing, Aaron directly used psychokinesis, summoning the invisible wind of psychokinesis to envelope the surroundings. In psychokinesis breeze, a human-shaped obstacle appears in the perception, even visible to the naked eye. The figure was only a few steps away from Aaron. Seeing this, Loki didn't know that his invisibility had been seen through, so he recovered his figure rather annoyed. Aaron didn't do anything to Loki, Frigga was still here after all. Frigga went on to say at this moment, use the psychokinesis storm to find the invisible, wise-cracking method. But this is based on knowing Loki's invisibility. What if someone uses invisibility to approach you without your knowledge? You can't use psychokinesis storm all the time, and stealth is impossible. That's the charm of this magic. Frigga pointed out the shortcomings of Aaron's cracking method. Aaron accepts humbly, after all, for now, it is indeed the case. With his current magic level, he can think of several cracking methods, but they can only be used when he knows it. However, the enemy will not tell you that he is invisible. However, Aaron can be sure that after learning more magic and further improving his strength, this problem will be solved. Moreover, the reason why he learned invisibility magic was not to assassinate anyone, but to improve his strength by hiding from Frost Titan and even Odin. Next, Frigg explained in detail how to use invisibility magic. It can be seen that her teaching ability is quite good. But for Eren, there is no difference between good teaching and bad teaching. You cast stealth magic seriously once, and you get a little gain, stealth magic proficiency plus one. Open black lens bracket you play it seriously, close black lens bracket. In front of the two of them, Aaron began to switch between invisible and physical. The stealth level of LV1 has many flaws. Both Frigga and Loki can easily spot weak spots. This level of invisibility can only hide the body, but not with clothes. But soon, when the invisibility magic was raised to LV2, the two frowned slightly. At this time, it is difficult to find flaws in the invisibility magic. Definitely, Loki has a lot of practical insights into invisibility, since it's the magic he uses most often to trick people. Therefore, Loki can still easily see where Eren is through his understanding of invisibility magic. But this situation will soon change. As Eren raised his invisibility magic to LV3, Loki's brows almost knit together. He was surprised to find that he couldn't seem to find any flaws behind Aaron's invisibility. No, it should still work. He knew all too well about invisibility magic. Even surpasses illusion magic and shapeshifting. Loki is confident that it will take some time to find the opening. It's just that he doesn't think about it anymore. The reason is simple. How long has Aaron been learning invisibility magic? Pushed myself to this extent so quickly. If you let the other party continue to study, I am afraid that you will surpass yourself soon. At this moment, Loki can understand why Amora and Irene both doubt life after teaching Eren magic. It's completely like the apprentice of the church starved to death of the master. Loki completely extinguished the idea of fighting Eren magically. He who has always prided himself on being a magical genius, finally understands the truth that there are people outside people. An evildoer is an evildoer, and a genius is mentally handicapped in front of them. Even if you are a genius, don't even think about comparing yourself with evildoers. Fortunately, Eren is just an ordinary Asgard, and he was born to be king. Thinking that he will control the magic monster in the future, Loki is very happy. Frigga on the other side also nodded frequently. Even though she had seen Eren's ability before, she was still shocked when she watched it again from a close distance. The god of magic must belong to Eren. No one is qualified to be the god of magic except him. After learning the invisibility magic, Eren didn't ask Frigg any more, but kept practicing the invisibility magic alone, and entered a state of frantic learning. Frigga was not angry when she saw Eren immersed in it, she even thought Eren's behavior was justified. Because only this kind of person can improve magic so quickly. Loki was also relieved to see that Eren didn't learn any other magic. After leaving with Frigg, he continued to pester him to learn magic. So in a flash, several hours passed. By the time Eren returned to his mind, the invisibility magic had been raised to LV4. It's not far from LV5. Seeing this, Eren simply continued to practice, trying to raise the invisibility magic to LV5 in one fell swoop. I don't know how long it has passed. 
With the last magic cast, the invisibility magic has finally been upgraded to LV5. You have performed a stealth magic seriously, and you have gained a lot, your stealth magic proficiency plus 4, your stealth magic has been upgraded, and the upgrade is group stealth magic. Group invisibility magic, as the name suggests, is no longer limited to hiding originally. Aaron can even go invisible with multiple people. And in this stealth state, it can perfectly hide the temperature, sound, light, smell and other flaws. Even the magical breath can be hidden. Even the current Asgard technology cannot detect the existence of Aaron. You must know that the toys played by children in Asgard have surpassed the cutting-edge technology of the Earth for hundreds of years. Moreover, Heimdall's all-seeing eye cannot detect the position of Aaron in the invisible state. At this moment, as long as he can reach Jotunheim smoothly, Aaron is confident that he can take a leisurely walk in the infinite Frost Titan. He can even move in and out of the Frost Titan's lair without stress, and sit on his throne in front of Loth. No one can know of his existence. As for whether Odin can perceive him when he is invisible, Aaron can't guarantee it. Because Odin rarely shows, he hides very deeply. No one can know how terrifying he is at the peak after exerting his full strength. And no one wants to test Odin's limits. This is what makes Odin appear unfathomable. Even analyzing Odin's strength can only be analyzed through his opponents. Being able to seal Hela, who made awakening Thor desperate, can also defeat Serta at his peak, no matter which one is, you can spy on Odin's depth. Eren doesn't think he has the strength to play Odin now. He also didn't want to test the opponent's magic attainments so quickly. With the help of Gold Finger, he will surpass Odin. Now that the invisibility magic is obtained, one more prerequisite is met. Next, you only need to know where the Holy Spring is, and you can initially solve the problem of magic energy storage. As for the two artifacts in Odin's treasury, Eren also wants to get them. However, there is a magic restriction set by Odin on the treasure curry, once it breaks in, Odin will know it. That may lead to a head-on conflict with Odin, and the gain outweighs the gain. Eren habitually conjured up a pen and paper to write down the plan. That previous plan wasn't perfect. He originally wanted to use mind charm magic to control Heimdall, using his all-seeing eye and Bifrost control to teleport himself to the Fountain of Wisdom. But considering that after the mind charms the other party, it may be known to the existence of the power of the mind. Eren wanted to use the secret passage between Jotunheim and Asgard to enter it. The Nine Realms are not accessible only by spaceship or Bifrost. There are some extremely special space points among the Nine Worlds that rely on the World Tree. As long as you find them, you can only travel to and from different worlds. The first few Frost Titans in Thor 1 bypassed Heimdall's surveillance under the leadership of Loki, came to Asgard through secret passages, and sneaked into Odin's treasury, trying to take the casket of ancient winters. Not only interrupted Thor's ceremony of becoming the heir, but also triggered a series of events such as expelling Thor and killing Loth. At this point, Asgard has entered an era of being ravaged, and the Nine Realms are no longer peaceful. If you want to know this secret passage, you need to use mind magic and mind reading to know Loki's thoughts. Or wait for Thor's enshrinement ceremony, and wait for the chaos to begin. Eren thought for a moment, and decided to use the first method. This Loki is not a female Loki, and there is no mind control at the level of awakening possession. As long as the spiritual magic attainment is high enough, you can detect the other party's memory without anyone noticing. The biggest problem is the coordinates of the Fountain of Wisdom. This question can also be answered by trying to read Heimdall's memory. Definitely, the library should also think of a way. Perhaps. Only use phantom duplication. It is too difficult for Amora alone to find available information from the vast library. Summon enough entity duplications to speed up the process. It's just that in this way, it will consume a lot of magic power and soul. After all, each duplication takes up a certain amount of mental power, the more the number, the greater the pressure on the user. But for the sake of planning, that's all. Thinking of this, Aaron is going to divide the plan into two steps. The first step is to improve the spiritual magic. When it is strong enough, if you haven't got the coordinates, go to the second step, temporarily put aside the strength improvement, and put all your mind into the library. If you still can't find the fountain of wisdom, then maybe you just have to wait patiently. 
Wait for Loki to muddy the waters of the Nine Realms, and fish in troubled waters. It won't be long before that day. Although Aaron doesn't know what time the Earth is now, but according to the time calculation, it should not be long before entering Thor 1's timeline. Even if you can't find the Holy Spring, at most it will delay some strength improvement. At that time, find a way to get the Casket of Ancient Winters, which can also solve this problem. Thinking of this, he waved his hand to cancel the magic, and Aaron rushed home to improve his mind magic as soon as possible. At this time, Thor and the others have already left, and I don't know which reception to attend. In the following time, Aaron frantically improved his spiritual magic, and then worked hard to restore his magic power. Because the next plan does not allow for any flaws, it is very important to maintain the peak of spirit and magic power. Another day passed. On this day, Aaron rarely found Loki. Loki finds it very strange that Aaron offered to meet him. Before that, Aaron never took the initiative to contact him, and only had the opportunity to deal with him through Thor. As smart as Loki, he has long been vaguely aware of Aaron's inexplicable rejection of him. That's why he didn't think about wooing Aaron. But he never cared because he was used to it. From ordinary Asgardians to the three warriors of Asgard and Odin, there is this sense of alienation. Loki doesn't think Aaron's estrangement is something beyond comprehension. However, this time he sensed an aura called conspiracy. If it wasn't for the appointment at the Academy of Magic, he wouldn't even be willing to attend the appointment. When he came to the agreed place, Loki didn't see Aaron's figure. This made him frown slightly. What's the situation? Are you playing tricks on me? Loki subconsciously brought the other person into him. In the past, he had made many, great feats, of asking people out and teasing them with magic. That is, now that he has grown up, he is unwilling to do this kind of, boring, trick, in fact, no one is fooled anymore. At this thought, Loki's mouth curved into a smile. If you want to play me, then you're looking for the wrong target. When it comes to juggling people, that's my specialty. Loki held his breath, quietly used invisibility and illusion, and used duplication to wait in place, while the main body was hidden in the dark, trying to play tricks on Eren. However, he didn't know at all that Aaron had quietly come behind him at the place where he hid his figure. Coming to the position behind Loki, Aaron has already made sure that the other party has not noticed him in the slightest. The stealth magic of LV5 has surpassed Loki's stealth magic attainments. Unless Aaron voluntarily exposes, Loki will never be able to rely on traditional methods to find out his location. Aaron puts a hand on Loki's shoulder. The power of the mind is activated in an instant. A golden light flashed in the pupils of Eren and Loki at the same time. In an instant, Eren got what he wanted from the opponent's brain. A secret passage leading to Jotunheim. Who is it? A sudden touch on the shoulder made Loki jump up subconsciously, staring behind him with wide eyes, and the phantom did the same, which looked extraordinarily funny. Loki looked around carefully, but found nothing unusual. Phantom. Or stealth. Only Aaron can achieve this level of attainment. Come out Aaron, I see you. I've never been afraid of anyone than magic. Loki shouted angrily, trying to trick Aaron out. That confident look is very seductive. Aren't you coming out yet? Isn't it illusion magic and invisibility magic? Do you really think I can't break your magic? HMPH. I advise you to show up on your own initiative, or when I find you, your reputation as a magical monster will be shattered. Hurry up the last 10 seconds. You're done when I count to 1. 10. 9. 8. 3. 2. Quote dot dot dot. 1 past 5. 1 past 4. 1 past 3. 1 past 2. 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock 9. 1 o'clock 8. Loki's serious expression could hardly be stretched anymore. While counting, he was also secretly observing the environment, trying to find where Eren was. For this reason, psychokinesis was used in the same way as Aaron. However, the results were far from ideal. Aaron didn't seem to be around. This made Loki's heart skip a beat, something was a little bit unexpected. The rhetoric has been put down, and it continues, he doesn't know how to collect it. I can only keep counting, but I dare not really call out one. Oops, it's over. While Loki was racking his brains for a solution. In the dark, Eren is observing Loki's facial expressions. He's trying to determine if Loki has sensed the power of the mind at that moment. 
But now it seems that Loki has not noticed the key problem, and pays more attention to invisibility and illusion. Eren was completely relieved, and he stopped teasing Loki anymore, and took the initiative to sell a loophole, deliberately walking through dusty places, leaving a layer of shallow marks. Loki, who has been observing the surroundings, quickly found the, weakness. 3 past 1. 1. I found you, Eren, here you are. Loki stepped forward quickly, psychokinesis surged all around, easily, finding the exact location of Eren. You found out anyway, Loki. Eren appeared annoyed. While Loki breathed a sigh of relief in the dark, he said on the bright face, Eren, I already knew your position. Although your invisibility magic is very good, it's still far behind me. You still have a lot to learn, don't try to surpass me in a short time. Loki finally found an opportunity to perform, and naturally he would not give up easily. This time he didn't play with Eren, and almost flipped the car, which was not so good. Coupled with Eren's identity, Loki talked more and more vigorously, without even thinking about a key question. That's why Eren was so careless. Also, there is no confirmation of Eren's authenticity. While Loki was tirelessly rambling, outside the Academy of Magic, the real Eren had already set off for Bifrost. From Loki, he got the answer he wanted. With Loki's magical attainments, he couldn't detect the mind detection, so Heimdall couldn't possibly detect it. So an entity duplication was left to entangle with Loki, and originally left stealthily to find Heimdall. Bifrost. Heimdall has been guarding the Bifrost Center for ten years, and casts his sharp eyes on the Nine Realms and beyond. He is the guardian god of Asgard, wielding the guardian sword, and guarding the portal of Asgard by Odin's order. He is also the common enemy of all those who try to fight the Nine Realms. As long as Heimdall remains here, the enemy can be blocked from the Nine Realms. No matter who wants to invade the Nine Realms, Heimdall cannot be bypassed, and he must find a way to get rid of him. In addition to the strength of Odin, the reason why Asgard has long-term peace and stability is also due to the great contribution of Heimdall. Now, Heimdall is still performing guardian duties. Eren, on the other hand, hid his figure and approached Bifrost step by step. During this process, Heimdall was completely unaware of Eren's presence. Even his gaze would occasionally withdraw from the outside world and cast it in the direction of Bifrost, to put an end to any possible situation. In fact, his job is to watch over the Nine Realms, which includes Asgard originally. While guarding against external enemies, he must also guard against internal enemies. The people of Asgard are naturally under his watch. Despite this, Eren was still in Heimdall's vision, and he was getting closer. Until he came to him. The Guardian God, after all, is just a trick. Eren sighed slightly, and then used his spiritual power, hoping to get news of the Fountain of Wisdom. However, the results were very disappointing. Heimdall didn't know where the Fountain of Wisdom was. No, it's not that I don't know. Just as the all-seeing eye doesn't really see all, Heimdall doesn't see everything. Loki and Eren in the invisible state, the special teleportation space connected to the Nine Realms, and the mysterious space where reality gem type particles are stored, and even Kamar Taj are all beyond Heimdall's surveillance. In Jotunheim, there are a few places that Heimdall cannot watch. One of the locations Eren is well aware of is the secret passage that Loki knows from his mind. With the particularity of the Fountain of Wisdom, it is beyond Heimdall's monitoring. Therefore, you only need to rule out a few of these possibilities, and you will be able to find the real Fountain of Wisdom. Eren withdrew his mind power, secretly wrote down those locations, turned and left without hesitation. Heimdall, the patron saint, was completely unaware that someone had quietly come and gone under his surveillance, and even probed his brain to get the answer he wanted. Magic Library. There are not many soldiers in Asgard, and there are even fewer qualified magicians. It often takes hundreds of years to cultivate a qualified magician who can stand on his own. More are half buckets of water, between apprentices and full-fledged magicians. This also led to the fact that the magicians who appeared in the movie can be counted with two hands. Odin, Frigg, Loki. When Eren came here, there were only a dozen or so people in the huge library. Even knowing that there are few magicians in Asgard, one cannot help but be struck by the desolation of the place. Eren's arrival did not attract the attention of others. 
They are all immersed in the ocean of magic, seeking more knowledge. Aaron looked around and quickly found Amora's location. Interestingly, with Amora at the center, there is no one else in a large area. This shows how unpopular Amora is in Asgard. Fountain of Wisdom. World Tree. Jotunheim, where is the holy fountain? Just as Aaron approached, he heard Amora's muttering faintly. Aaron stepped forward and patted Amora on the shoulder, startling the latter. Who is it? Didn't see my old lady, ah. Like a frightened cat, Amora exploded her hair in an instant and wanted to spit out the fragrance, but when she saw that the person who came was Aaron, she immediately swallowed the tiger wolf words that had rushed down her throat, and regained her seductive face again. A wonderful face-changing skill was completed within a short period of time, and Aaron couldn't help but laugh when he saw it. Aaron. Master. I'm looking for news about the Fountain of Wisdom, why are you here? When she said this, Amora looked very uncomfortable, and she no longer had the frivolous and casual attitude of a strong woman, but looked like a timid quail. Aaron frowned, his face was a little ugly, but soon he smiled again, have you forgotten what I said? Teacher Amora. The tone of the words, Teacher Amora, is particularly loud. Amora instantly remembered the key points of Aaron's previous instructions, and her face changed again, she no longer looked so humble and timid, this time it was much more normal. Aaron, what do you want to see me for? Is it about magic? Amora said with a serious teacher's appearance. Aaron nodded, his voice became much quieter in an instant, I need to see the map of Jotunheim and some important marked areas. So it's this problem, it's easy to handle, I'll tell you the key to this magic now. Amora nodded, and led Aaron towards a bookshelf, quickly out of sight. The two stopped and stopped, gathering a pile of books from different places and putting them together. Jotunheim is the domain of the Frost Titans. Although Asgard completely conquered the Frost Titans a thousand years ago, and even broke into their lair and took the casket of ancient winters, we don't know much about Jotunheim. Amora opened a book while talking, this book records the most detailed map information of Jotunheim, including the location of the lair of Frost Titan Lof. It is said that the corrector of this book is Heimdall. His eyes are trustworthy. There will not be much difference between the information and the real Jotunheim, but there is no information about the Fountain of Wisdom. It's this book. No need. I already have an idea. Aaron glanced at the map casually, corresponding with several points in his mind one by one, and quickly narrowed down the scope. Jotunheim is much bigger than Asgard. Even if the target is narrowed down to a few points, it is not so easy to find. If you want to go through all the coordinates, it will take an unacceptable amount of time to rely on your feet alone. And it's a world of ice and snow there, and with the physical fitness of the Asgardians, it can't bear it for a long time. Aaron didn't want to stay in that awful place for too long. Now narrowing down again with the help of map data, it's time to go to Jotunheim. Next, you don't need to search for news about the Fountain of Wisdom anymore, just stay honest and don't do stupid things. After exhorting Amora, Aaron left the library again. On the way to leave, another entity duplication was separated. This duplication will attract the attention of others, including Frigga, during his time in Jotunheim. Traveling to Jotunheim without permission is a felony. A thousand years ago, Odin and Lof signed a truce agreement. The two sides are not allowed to step into each other's territory. Anyone who dares to cross the border without complying with the agreement will be at their own risk. It is impossible for Aaron to tell other people about this matter. Once he knows, even if he escapes the siege of the Frost Titan, he will definitely be severely punished by Odin. Even if he is the son of a hero, a magical evildoer, he cannot be exempted from guilt. The entity duplication of LV5 is enough to deceive everyone except Odin. As long as I try to avoid going to the Golden Hall to meet Odin during this time, then everything will be fine. But just in case, if you really find the Fountain of Wisdom and solve the problem of magical energy reserves, the first thing you should upgrade is the portal. If I can travel between Asgard and Jotunheim anytime, anywhere, I can completely avoid the possibility of being discovered. As Aaron walked in stealth, he thought about the plan behind him. Soon came the secret passage in Loki's memory. Without hesitation, he stepped into the cave without stopping, passed through a space turbulence, and came to the icy Jotunheim, the hometown of Frost Titans. Looking around, there are mountains, rivers and lands formed by ice for thousands of years. 
Aaron shuddered at the biting chill. Even a body as strong as his can hardly resist the cold, which shows how low the temperature here is. Aaron took out a coat made of high-quality Asgard leather from the space, and wrapped it around a plush scarf, so that he would not continue to be attacked by the cold. Relying on the memory of the Jotunheim map in Heimdall's mind, Aaron set out on the journey to find the Holy Spring after determining the direction. Along the way, Aaron remained invisible. Even in ice and snow, it can perfectly cover the traces of walking. Frost Titans passing by from time to time did not notice this unexpected guest. They can't even imagine that there is an Asgard who is a world enemy, walking under their noses. Jotunheim rarely sees the sun. At least during the time Aaron was gone, he never saw the sun. Snow is the only weather here. The faint light coming from nowhere keeps the world from falling into eternal darkness. But even so, for people of other races, Jotunheim is definitely not a good place, let alone a tourist attraction worth visiting. Here, besides ice and snow, there is ice and snow, and the frost titan hidden somewhere may also appear at any time and take people's lives. I don't know how long I walked like this. Aaron finally found a suspected fountain of wisdom. This place is not covered in ice and snow like other places. On the contrary, there is a kind of spring full of vitality. And there are no frost titans nearby, it seems that they are avoiding this place. Although he hasn't seen the fountain of wisdom yet, Aaron is sure that this is the place he was looking for. He can perceive the majestic magical breath from the air. The whole body absorbs the surging magic power like a glutton. Right here. There was a flash of light in Aaron's eyes, and then he entered it and came to a holy spring. Fountain of Wisdom. The Fountain of Wisdom, also known as the Fountain of Mimir, is located in Jotunheim, connected to the World Tree. It is said that all you need to do is drink from the spring to gain wisdom. According to the myths and legends before time travel, Odin came to the spring in order to gain wisdom, exchanged his right eye, and obtained all the knowledge in the world after drinking the spring water. At this point Odin lost an eye forever. Now, though, it's the Marvel Universe. Although it is not yet certain whether this universe is a movie universe, Eren knows from memory that the eye that Odin loses now was not sacrificed to gain wisdom, but was injured by Loth. In other words, Odin's wisdom has nothing to do with the Fountain of Wisdom, and its ability to predict Ragnarok comes from Odin's power. Amora also learned from fragmentary information that the Fountain of Wisdom has some unknown special powers. But no one knows yet. After all, the relationship between Asgard and Jotunheim does not allow anyone to discover the secrets of the Fountain of Wisdom. Aaron also thought about obtaining infinite wisdom from the Fountain of Wisdom, maybe the Attribute Intelligence column can directly reach the top. This also maximizes the potential of materialized magic. He is too lacking in intelligence, but the current priority attribute is energy intensity, and intelligence can only be temporarily stranded. And with his current intelligence, he couldn't display the maximum level of materialized magic of LV5 at all. Not to mention the LV6 and LV7 at the back. Yet gaining wisdom from the Fountain of Wisdom is only a matter of thinking. For him, the Fountain of Wisdom is too strange and too mysterious. Before he has enough knowledge and strength, it is the most stupid behavior to rashly acquire power far beyond his own ability. And, as far as Aaron knows, getting wisdom from the Fountain of Wisdom definitely comes with a price. Whether it's Odin in mythology or Thor in the comics, they gouged out their eyes and sacrificed them. Odin only lost one eye, Thor lost two. Aaron's strength is much worse than theirs, maybe the Fountain of Wisdom still doesn't like his eyes. Therefore, the most practical thing is to improve your own strength. When the strength comes up, you can have everything. Today, the most useful use of the mysterious fountain of wisdom for Eren is magic. Before crossing, there is a saying that the magical energy of Asgard and even the Nine Realms comes from the World Tree, and the fountain of wisdom is one of the bridges. The relationship between Asgard and the World Tree is like Kamar Taj and the Dimension Mephista. The former needs to obtain energy from the latter. While Asgard gains energy, it also has to pay a corresponding price. Aaron didn't know the cost, maybe Ragnarok was one of the costs. This is a cycle. The Esir will repeat the eternal cycle of Ragnarok and rebirth without end. If this is the case, then the Protoss who are as strong as the Esir are just puppets being manipulated. However, Aaron didn't get too entangled in this issue. 
His future is destined to transcend the nine realms and the world tree. Even if Ragnarok came, he could not affect him. When the gods fell, he was safe and sound. The magic that surrounds the fountain of wisdom is much stronger than that of Asgard. I can continuously absorb magic power from the fountain of wisdom. As long as I don't leave here, then I won't be troubled by magic power anymore. However, this is only a stopgap measure. We must find a portable energy source to replace the fountain of wisdom. Only in this way can we ensure that no matter where we are, we can continuously improve our strength and maintain peak combat effectiveness. Aaron's brain is spinning wildly, the energy absorption of LV-6 is fully capable of absorbing unowned energy from the air to supplement the loss while he is consuming mana. Near the fountain of wisdom, his strength will usher in a period of rapid growth. But Aaron wasn't satisfied with that. The fountain of wisdom cannot be carried with you, and it is destined to be only a transitional solution. Follow-up plans will continue. The next first goal is the casket of ancient winters. Energy absorption is currently unable to absorb primary energy. The eternal fire is nearly infinite in power, but its master, Serta, is still alive. Aaron is not sure if he can absorb the power of the eternal fire after getting it. The casket of ancient winters is different. The casket of ancient winters has lost its true owner, Loth and Loki are controlling it by virtue of their racial identities, and cannot exert their full power. In view of this, Aaron is confident that he can absorb the energy safely. Most of all, Loth is clearly a softy. Loki can kill him with one shot, and Aaron can do the same. Loth is also not like Serta, who almost has the characteristics of immortality, and has a bug-like power of fate. Even if he is killed, he is destined to appear again in the future. Because Ragnarok is inevitable, Serta, as the most critical figure among them, will definitely appear. In other words, Eren killed Serta for the eternal fire, and before Ragnarok arrives, it is estimated that it will be difficult to really take charge of the eternal fire. In addition, Eren and Loth still have a feud against their father and mother, no matter what, Loth must die. Naturally, the casket of ancient winters became Eren's primary target. Next, Eren settled down and began to practice magic. With the support of a huge energy source, Eren cast a large-scale phantom environment magic around him in a very grand manner. In this way, even if Frost Titan and Heimdall set their sights here, they will not be able to find Eren, but Eren can cast magic at will without worrying about being discovered. The magic that ascends first, the portal. The plan to find the Fountain of Wisdom is absolutely correct. With the support of a huge energy source, the progress of learning magic is completely different from before. Teleportation magic is a high-level magic that consumes a lot of mana. Even old Loki, who has lived for an unknown amount of time, can't last long. It is a bottomless pit with more than depth, and the consumption will double as the teleportation distance and maintenance time increase. If before, if Eren wanted to improve teleportation magic, he would have to alternate between meditation and teleportation, and energy absorbing would take more time than practicing teleportation magic. Now it is different, here, Aaron can open energy absorbing, the energy near the fountain of wisdom seems almost infinite. Every time energy absorbing, it's enough to practice teleportation magic for a long time. In less than a day, the teleportation magic has been upgraded to LV5. Aaron at the moment has a better understanding of why Kamar Taj is so keen on Lone Mojo. Asgard learns magic step by step, often taking hundreds of years to take shape. However, the magician of Kamar Taj only needs 10 years or even a few years to cultivate a big magician. It is even easier to use long-distance teleportation, and there is no magic power consumption at all. After all, the magic they use is borrowed from the dimension Mephista, not their own, so it doesn't hurt to use it. At this point, Asgard's magic system is far behind. The requirements for blood are higher. Perhaps only Odin with the power of Odin, and Thor with the power of Thor can do what Kamartaj did. Others are more like Heimdall, using one or two dark energy transmissions and then stopping. So much so that Kong has powerful magic, but dare not use it at will. Even the formed magicians, the usual task is to enchant, not to go to the battlefield. No wonder the status of the magician has been underappreciated for so long. Thinking of this, Aaron felt that Irene's dream might never come true. 
If the status of a magician is to be improved, what is needed is not one or two magician heroes, but reforms from magic energy absorption. There must be a more efficient energy growth method to allow magician to move from behind the scenes to the foreground. Aaron's method of improving magic is limited to himself and cannot be popularized by the public. Even if his magical strength surpassed Thor and Odin, became the new god of magic, and became the most powerful magician, the magicians of Asgard could not fundamentally improve their status. Still can only be reduced to the vassal of the soldiers. Aaron shook his head, he couldn't think of a way to solve this problem for the time being. Moreover, he does not have the mind to solve it at present. His most important purpose is to become stronger. Others are things that I occasionally think about in my spare time. Return of Consciousness. Aaron looked at the upgraded teleportation magic, space teleportation LV5. In fact, during this wave of promotion and teleportation magic, he has not really experienced the portal yet. Using the portal does not mean passing through the gate to gain proficiency, it only needs to completely build the gate. According to Frigga's explanation of portal magic, the simplest portal can only transmit the location within sight. This is not because only such a short distance can be teleported, but because the mana consumption within this distance is controllable. Once beyond the line of sight, there may be a situation where the magic power is not enough. In addition, there is a more important point. Once beyond the line of sight, the constructed portal is likely to be unstable, or even impossible to construct successfully. If the portal is unstable, space turbulence may occur, and if you don't pay attention, you will be torn apart by space. The reason for the unsuccessful construction may be that there is a positional deviation, and there are other substances at the teleportation location, resulting in the failure of the portal construction. It may also be that the distance is too far, and the pure magic power is not enough. When the teleportation magic reaches a certain level, it can be teleported freely in the entire Asgard domain. However, it is quite difficult to achieve this level of teleportation magic. According to Frigg, even she couldn't do that. It's not because of insufficient magic attainments, but simply because of insufficient magic reserves. Since Frigga became a queen, she has fallen behind in magic cultivation, and her magic power is not as good as Loki at the moment. As for Loki, maybe he can't even teleport magic. Maybe, but Eren never saw him use it. Therefore, in Asgard now, Odin has the highest attainment in teleportation magic. According to Frigga, on the basis of teleportation magic, Odin has developed a more powerful teleportation magic, and already has the ability to teleport across galaxies. Eren is still skeptical about this. Because this teleportation ability can be granted. Odin once bestowed this ability on Heimdall, giving him the ability to control the transmission of dark energy. According to this situation, the transmission of dark energy may be the result of strengthening by using the power of Odin and also has the ability to bless others. But these are guesses. Rather than guessing the source of Odin's inter-galaxy teleportation, it is better to look at the limit of space teleportation. The first experiment, of course, did not directly teleport across the galaxy. The location chosen by Eren is the secret passage point. With a wave of his hand, he used the teleportation magic that he had practiced hundreds of times. Probably because the energy absorbed comes from the Fountain of Wisdom, the color of Aaron's magic energy is different from that of Amora, it is golden. This is similar to Odin and Heimdall. The golden energy builds a circular channel. As for the other end of the portal, it is the place where I arrived at Jotunheim in my memory. After the instant construction was successful, Aaron stepped into it. In the next second, we came to the entrance of the secret passage. Good job. Feeling the consumption of magic power in the body, almost a tenth of it was used up. Can you only use it ten times? I don't know if it is possible to carry out inter-galaxy teleportation under the heyday. Doing what he wanted, Eren first returned to the Fountain of Wisdom to recover his magic power, and then imagined the settlement of Asgard in his mind. The magic power in the body rushed out crazily along the hand. In a moment, a golden portal appeared in front of him successful. But, it's still too much. Once you use this trick, you will lose 9 layers of energy, and your strength will be greatly reduced. Until the problem of mana reserves is completely resolved, it is best not to use this trick unless it is absolutely necessary. 
Otherwise you won't be able to come back in a short time after teleportation. Aaron was happy, but also quite a headache. He managed to teleport across galaxies like Heimdall, and he can even teleport others, but the consumption of magic power is too great. If someone shoots at him at this time, it is likely to be in danger because of the magic problem. After some experiments, Aaron dismissed the portal directly. Go back to Asgard now, and it will take a long time to recover and teleport back, which is completely unnecessary. Next, it is better to further improve the magic. While transforming energy absorbing into its own magic power, Aaron conceived an improvement plan. The inter-galaxy portal is enough. Continue to improve, there is no need at present. Might as well practice energy shield. Further increase life-saving ability. Soon, the magic power was restored. Aaron started a new round of magic upgrade. At the same time, Asgard. During the few days when Aaron left, no one could see through Aaron's authenticity. In the past few days, Frigga has approached Aaron twice. But they all use learning magic as an excuse, and the teaching progress is temporarily postponed. Frigga never suspected anything. It is true that Aaron's magic ability is very strong, but learning magic is not that simple. No matter how smart a person is, he needs time to study. As for Loki, he passed by Aaron's place many times. Until now, he has not noticed the flaw in that invisibility magic contest. He thinks that he is still better than Aaron in invisibility magic. That's why he passed by Aaron's residence for the first time, and checked whether Aaron was going out every day, so as to continue the, teaching, last time. To be honest, the experience of teaching magic and monsters was so wonderful. Loki really wants to do it again. However, his dream didn't last long. In order to avoid Loki's entanglement, Aaron directly controlled the duplication, and taught Loki a lesson using invisibility magic. After that, Loki was never around again. That's how it finally cleared up. In addition to Loki, several people in Thor also went to drink with Aaron. Although some time has passed, people's enthusiasm for Aaron has not diminished. In particular, Aaron hardly appeared in public after the battle, which added a bit of mystery to his identity as a magical monster. The image of a hard-working magician comes to mind. Enthusiastic people, after asking Thor several times, they finally couldn't dodge it, so they could only drag Aaron to a few receptions. Fortunately, only part of the mind can be used to control the materialized duplication to complete most of the scenes, without revealing the truth like last time, or else they would have to find other excuses to deal with the verbal criticism of Thor and the others. Throughout Asgard, probably only Amora has a faint awareness of Eren's problem. She is a teacher at the Academy of Magic, and she also knows that Eren has evaded Frigga's teaching arrangements several times. Just imagine a monster who is so interested in magic, how could he give up learning new magic? The only possibility is that there is another, more important matter distracting Eren's attention. Combined with previous experiences, Amora boldly guessed that the real Eren may have entered Jotunheim through some unknown means, and embarked on the path to find the Fountain of Wisdom. The idea is scary. It's frightening to think about. The Titans of Jotunheim are very strong. Even in Odin's presence, it would be impossible to defeat the Frost Titans in such numbers. Moreover, she has also followed Bifrost. Recently, there has been no sign of Bifrost opening. Heimdall's loyalty to Odin is beyond doubt, and it is impossible to let Eren go without permission. If it were Thor, it would be possible. He is recognized as the future king of Asgard. If he goes to tell Heimdall, the other party may give it convenience for the sake of the crown prince. But Eren definitely doesn't have that face. So, how exactly did Eren get to Jotunheim? And how to find the Fountain of Wisdom in the Endless Frost Titan? After all this time, has Eren found the Fountain of Wisdom? What kind of power did you get from the spring water? How powerful is he now? The more Amora thought about it, the more frightened she became, and the more she thought about it, the more flustered she became. If Eren has really achieved these two impossible things, does it mean that his strength has grown to an unfathomable level? I will never be able to escape Eren's control. But, if Eren can really do it, being his subordinate does not seem to be an unacceptable thing. Amora muttered softly. Unknowingly, she developed a kind of reverence and obedience to Eren for the strong. It is quite difficult for her to have this kind of mentality. 
After all, she is the enchantress who dared to rebel against Odin's rule. Only by being stronger than Odin is it possible to gain her loyalty. The cultivation of magic is always so easy for people to forget the time. Especially in the case of extremely abundant magic power, when you can use magic without pressure, it will bring you an unprecedented magic experience. Eren didn't have the other Asgard magicians who struggled with lack of magic, nor the Kamar Taj magicians who worried about the side effects of borrowing magic. He can practice and improve his magic to his heart's content, and with the ability of God's reward, he perfectly interprets what it means to be a coward. Every day, the strength can be increased. Even every hour has a new harvest. Since Aaron collected a large amount of food in advance, in Jotunheim, where resources are scarce, there is no need to worry about the supply problem for the time being. This feeling of rapidly improving strength without external interference makes people addicted to it. At the moment, the attribute template has changed drastically. Open black lens bracket name close black lens bracket, Aaron. Open black lens bracket life close black lens bracket, 1000 five thousandths. Open black lens bracket ability close black lens bracket, God rewards those who work hard. Skills, energy absorption LV6, materialization magic LV5, fighting technique LV5, sword technique LV5, spear technique LV5, space storage LV5, mind barrier LV5, psychokinesis LV5, energy explosion LV5, energy shield LV5, space teleportation LV5, mind magic LV5, group invisibility magic LV5. Attributes, intelligence 3, strength 4, speed 3, 4, endurance 4, 5, energy strength 5, fighting skill 6. Strength evaluation, surface level, first class superhero. Due to the existence of psychokinesis, Aaron can fly at supersonic speed, so the upper limit of the speed column is 4. The ups and downs of stamina are due to the energy shield. With Aaron's current energy reserves and the magic level of the energy shield, he can easily resist bullets and even missile attacks. Compared to the Asgard three warriors and Sith, his defense is much stronger. Even surpassed Loki. Although Loki looks very hip, his defensive power is definitely commendable. Not everyone survives Hulk's hard falls. Not everyone can face Hawkeye's explosive arrows without even breaking the skin. Anyway, Loki also has the royal blood of Frost Titan, even if it is a defective version, his congenital physical fitness is stronger than that of ordinary Asgardians. Definitely, Loki's physical fitness has also been complained about, such as being subdued by ordinary people from the time administration. According to common sense, his magic is banned, and his physical fitness will not be sealed. What's more, he is not an Asgard, but an Ice Titan, and his racial advantage is there. Perhaps, it is simply a plot need. In addition to speed and endurance, it is worth mentioning that the energy intensity has increased by one. The most important thing is that the strength evaluation has finally been promoted, stepping from the second-rate Premier League to the first-rate Premier League club. At least in the early stage, it is finally not cannon fodder. Seeing this, Aaron also smiled. Although judging from the major attributes, his strength is actually not a first-class superhero. Whether it is Hulk, Thor or Captain Marvel, he is not comparable in attributes. Even the attributes of some second-rate superheroes are no worse than him. But who called him a magician? Magician's comprehensive combat power has never been simply viewed on the stats panel. Their magic is the most unpredictable. Just like Doctor Strange, his attributes are definitely not as good as Thor, but he uses the characteristics of borrowing magic, combined with the many magics he has learned, even Thor can't take him down. The powerful Loki was even killed in person. As for Eren, much less to say. All level 55 5 magic is enough to explain everything. It is rare for other magicians to be able to raise a certain magic to LV5, which is enough to be called an authority in the field of magic. And what about Eren? Experts in all fields. In terms of fighting, it would be a second-rate Chaoyang game. Even if it is a first-class superhero, it is absolutely worthy. In fact, with Eren at the moment's strength, even if he faced Thor, he might win. At least it would put Thor in a tough fight. He knows too much magic and is too comprehensive. Turn Thor around with ease. If done properly, it can even cause a death crisis. Thor is very strong, whether it is strength, 
defense our vitality, it is crushing for Eren. But Eren's space teleportation magic, mind magic, and materialized illusion magic, if used properly, can definitely pose a threat to Thor. Moreover, according to this speed of improvement, it won't be long before Eren can catch up with Thor on the stats panel. He is confident that he will surpass in energy intensity in a short time. Fighting skills may even have been on par with Thor. Definitely, and intelligence. Eren doesn't think he's less intelligent than Thor. He also has a potential advantage in his knowledge of the plot. Totally slap Thor. If you want to continue to improve your current strength, the only thing you need is time. Before continuing to improve, maybe you can consider enchanting magic. Eren took out the enchanted spellbook, which he hadn't touched since he had read it for a while. Enchanting magic does not improve strength much, and it will take a lot of time to research. And he also discovered that the power of enchantment depends on the magician's own energy level and magical attainments. Even if I learned the enchanting magic before, I couldn't make a satisfactory artifact. It is different now, relying on the fountain of wisdom with almost inexhaustible energy, as well as a variety of powerful magic, he is confident in creating a worthy artifact. Then, enchanting magic should be included in the learning plan. Learning enchantment magic is no easier than any other kind of magic. This magic has a deep knowledge. Asgard can live without a combat magician, but not without an enchanting magician. The weapons in the hands of every warrior and the equipment on their bodies are all enchanted by magicians. The defense against energy weapons is almost full. Neither human bullets nor dark elves energy guns are enough to pose a threat to ordinary soldiers who are on guard. You know, the weapon in the hands of the dark elves can easily crush the thick stone pillars hugged by two people. This shows that the enchantment defense is powerful. That thin layer of energy protection allowed them to advance steadily like tanks in the face of long-range output from other races. Moreover, their equipment is all made of Uru metal, with strong physical defense and excellent magic conductivity, allowing them to withstand most conventional weapons in the universe. Weapons that can break their defenses can be called artifacts. If the Uru metal allows them to ignore the blades of other races, then the enchantment gives them the confidence to despise the energy weapons of other civilizations. After investing in the study of enchanting, Eren found that if he wanted to learn this magic, it would take a longer time than learning other magic. It even involves Asgard's technology. It is worth mentioning that Asgard's enchantment and technology complement each other. It belongs to the kind of relationship where I am in you and you are in me. With this in mind, Eren decisively set his sights on one of the plates. The enchantment of this plate is different from other parts and is quite special. The difficulty is also relatively large. But for Eren, it was quite appropriate. Because this part of enchanting knowledge is about how to impart the magic you have learned to an object in a special form, so that it has the same magical characteristics. For example, if you enchant a weapon on the earth, and endow it with space storage magic, you can increase the ammunition capacity, and transform a rifle with 30 rounds of magazines into one without changing its performance and file size. Machine guns with hundreds of rounds. Or add invisibility magic to a cloak to make it have invisibility characteristics and become a veritable invisibility cloak. But there is a problem here, that is, due to the different magic, the enchanted Duanyi is not the same. Many magicians don't have enough time and magic power to learn as many magic enchanting methods as possible, so there is a certain phenomenon that they only study the magic they are best at. But this problem is not a problem for Eren. As long as he studies hard and practice hard, he can continuously improve the level of enchantment, and then perfectly reproduce his own magic on other objects, and create artifacts in batches. As for mana consumption, it is not a problem. With energy absorption in hand, just continue to suck when there is no energy. Next, Eren devoted himself to the research of enchanting magic. As a future god of magic, he must be proficient in enchantment magic, otherwise it would be completely unreasonable. Time is passing bit by bit in learning. During this time, Asgard was not at peace. The last incident of rebellion in Vanaheim was not accidental, nor was it the only one. Although the Nine Realms have been relatively peaceful in the past thousand years, it is only compared to before. The countries within the Nine Realms are also more warlike and more ambitious than the last. The Dark Elves who tried to pull the universe into endless darkness again, 
the Frost Titan who tried to bring the Earth into a new Ice Age, and the Flame Titan who started Ragnarok. In comparison, the current rebellion in Vanaheim is nothing more than small troubles, mild and over the top. They do not have a complete kingdom of God, and their forces are extremely scattered, but it is also because of this that they can often set off rebellions and want to become the new Lord of Warner. Odin does not allow Vanaheim to rally again to challenge Asgard's rule, nor does he want anyone to start the War of the Nine Realms again. Therefore, Vanaheim has become a novice village to hone Thor. At the same time, in order to prevent the recurrence of Eren stealing the limelight last time, Odin deliberately ignores Eren, and suggests that Frigga holds Eren back and lets Thor bring his other friends to suppress other minor unrest. One of them stepped into the Kingdom of Flame Titan. But this time I didn't face the Titan King Serta. Strictly speaking, the Flame Titan's rebellion this time is also a temptation under Serta's signal. Test whether Asgard is still as fast as before. Thor lived up to Odin's trust. He brings victory back to Asgard. The name of Thor resounds throughout Asgard. Although Eren was not in Asgard during this time, Odin's calculations could be heard clearly even in Jotunheim as far away. Steal the limelight. Does not exist. He doesn't have the energy to steal the limelight right now. Isn't it good to learn magic? Isn't the power boost enticing enough? Why go to playhouse and bully some children? Eren wanted to continue learning, but a piece of news circulated recently made him have to stop and return to Asgard again. Because Odin is already ordering a coronation. Thor is about to become the new king. Did time pass so fast, the coronation ceremony. Remember that the coronation ceremony was finally suspended due to the invasion of the Frost Titan. Hearing this news, Eren quickly thought of the timeline he was in at this moment. If nothing else, after the coronation ceremony, Thor will become the new king of Asgard. This also explains why Odin has sent Thor one after another in recent times. It turned out that it was to increase the chips for Thor's superiority and deepen the impression of Thor's bravery and strength in the hearts of the people of Asgard. Combined with the development of the plot, Eren thought of the core of the problem. Odin is really old. Presumably he already had a premonition that his time was running out. Because from Thor 1, Odin began to withdraw from the core of power. And in the next few years, go to the earth to retire, and then enter the soul castle. It is also from this moment that Asgard enters the countdown to its demise. The once powerful Esir Protoss is about to usher in Ragnarok. Thinking of this, Eren felt no joy, only a sense of urgency. For others, the coronation was a rare event in Asgard, and one that deserved to be celebrated. But for Eren, it means that a big event is coming, and all forces will appear one after another in the future, stage the Marvel version of the Dance of Demons. Time, time. If you give me more time to develop, let alone Hela and Serta, even if it's the celestial group, so what? Eren shook his head, not thinking about these things anymore. Fortunately, there is already a certain amount of self-protection strength now, as long as you don't go too wild, there will be no danger. Besides, there are still a few years to improve before Odin is completely out of the game. During this period of time, it was enough to raise his strength to an objective level. After simply packing up the equipment, Eren opened the portal, came to the secret passage, and wanted to go back. However, a familiar person came from afar. Loki. Eren was very surprised to see someone coming. Thinking about it, I was relieved again. Yes. The Frost Titan was brought by Loki during the coronation ceremony. Maybe Loki also cut some kind of deal with Lafi. Otherwise, why would Lao Fei say that Odin is surrounded by traitors? Regarding Loki's calculation, Eren thought about it and chose to ignore it. To some extent, the chaotic Asgard is easier to fish in troubled waters. Just take this opportunity to get the casket of ancient winters. With this in mind, Eren, who was in an invisible state, sat and watched Loki leave before stepping into the tunnel. As soon as he got home, Eren cancelled the materialized duplication, and then walked towards the Academy of Magic. As a magician who loves to learn, why not learn more magic? Frigg still has a lot of useful magic in her hands. But on the way, Eren was stopped. The people who stopped him were none other than Thor and the others. Hey Eren, you're finally getting out of the cabin. Seeing Eren, Thor and the others looked very happy. Eren rolled his eyes, stop it, if you're asking me to drink, it's still free, I'm just going to ask Tiano about magic. 
the drinking things should be left after the coronation ceremony, and I will have a good drink with you then. Aaron, you've changed. Thor patted Aaron on the shoulder, and said earnestly, I think back then, the few of us were regulars at the wine table, and you would never refuse our invitation. But what about now? You've actually moved on and abandoned your friends for the sake of magic. My heart hurts. Aaron patted Thor's hand away in disgust, and said concisely, get out. After getting to know Thor, Aaron realized how unreliable this carefree Thor is usually. He is obviously a conceited reckless man, but sometimes he is more naughty than a girl. Can you imagine a man nearly two meters tall, winking at you in front of tens of thousands of people at a very formal ceremony? Whether other people can do it, Aaron doesn't know. But he's pretty sure it's nothing to Thor. And even more outrageous things than this can be done. Seeing Thor's still smiling face, Aaron held his forehead and sighed. Thor, what do you think the king would think if he knew how you are now? He's going to think, my boy is awesome. Thor replied without thinking. I doubt if the blood of the god king is flowing in your body. Aaron's eyes were full of doubts. Thor patted his chest to show his bravery, otherwise. What do you think? What flows in my body is definitely the purest and oldest power of God. Wine and cheese. Aaron shrugged and didn't say anything, but said helplessly, you won the narcissism. When Aaron conceded defeat, the others laughed too. They have long been familiar with it. Who Thor is, as his friends, they know it well. Although the other party is funny from time to time, it doesn't make people upset, but makes people smile. It is precisely this kind of Thor who has no scheming, honesty, and approachability that makes it easier for them to support and support him. Unlike Loki, who usually likes to use magic to tease people, and his scheming is even more unacceptable. Except for Thor, all of them are somewhat repulsed by Loki. Say Sao Sao, Sao Sao arrives. While talking about Loki, Loki also arrived. Judging by his appearance, it is obvious that he is also on his way to the Magic Academy. Since several people rejected Loki, they subconsciously searched for other topics when they saw him coming over. By the way, Aaron, what magic have you been learning recently? This is the first time I've seen you take so long to learn a certain spell. I heard that in order to learn this magic, you didn't even find Tiano to learn new magic. Sif asked rather curiously. Everyone, including Thor, looked over. The Academy of Magic is not a military forbidden place, and the news about Eren repeatedly dodging the teaching arrangement of the Queen has been spread long ago. They also know Eren's dedicated research spirit, and the freshness of learning magic cannot be faked. Everyone wonders what Eren has been up to all this time. Loki, who had just arrived, pricked up his ears. He was also very puzzled that Eren hadn't come to the Magic Academy during this time. I am afraid that Aaron has learned some terrible magic behind his back. It's nothing, just studied some enchanting magic. Aaron responded by throwing out enchanting casually. Enchantment. Have you learned it? As soon as Sif opened his mouth, he immediately refuted. No, with your ability, whether you can learn it or not is the problem. How far has your enchantment magic reached now? Generally, I just made some small gadgets. Aaron took out a cloak and introduced it to everyone. Not long ago, I learned the invisibility magic from Tiano. No, after being exposed to enchanting magic, I wondered if I could give the invisibility magic to the equipment, so that people would not people with invisibility magic can also use invisibility. Think about it, if our fighters can enter the invisible state at any time, what effect will it have on the enemy? What effect? A few people brought the enemy into thought for a while, and their faces changed instantly. Imagine a group of warriors who are very strong in defense and attack, and have learned the stealth of the assassin magician. When the enemy was still waiting, they suddenly launched an attack. Definitely kill them by surprise. Asgard's fighters are already so strong that they almost have no opponents. If they can be invisible, they are simply invincible. Did you succeed? Loki looked a little gloomy. The invisibility cloak had worked, which wasn't a good thing for him. What he likes to use most is invisibility magic, if everyone knows it, then he is still playing a fart. Aaron nodded, and showed the cloak in his hand to several people, this is it. May I try it? Thor looked eager to try. Can. As soon as the words fell, Thor grabbed the cloak, put it on his back, and muttered, the color is wrong, 
it can't compare with mine, I suggest you try red, so that it can match my armor. Thor, I didn't prepare it for you. If you don't like it, you can give others a try first. As soon as Eren grabbed the edge of the cloak, he wanted to take it away. However, Thor's movements were faster, he turned around and avoided, I'm just kidding, in fact, black is also pretty good, at worst, you can add color to it. By the way, can you still see me? Thor raised his hand and danced to several people twice, trying to make sure he was invisible. If you want to be invisible, say, invisibility, in your head, and if you want to uninvisibility, say, disarm, Aaron explained. Thor frowned. It sounds like a high level. Stealth. When Thor yelled, a golden light appeared on the cloak, and then Thor's entire body was hidden. Successful. I really can't see it. The others were amazed to see this scene. Fandral stepped forward, reaching out to touch where Thor was originally standing. But it was empty. Um, Thor, you. I'll go, why don't you touch my ass? Fandral felt a hand patting his back, took a step forward, and immediately drew his sword and looked behind vigilantly. Okay Thor, today I must find you and chop off your salty pig's hand. After speaking, he rushed forward, trying to find Thor's location. However, after several searches, there was still nothing. Seeing Fandral's miserable state, Vorsteg quickly took out the axe from behind and blocked it. I tell you, don't come here. Sif also took out the long sword from behind, and glanced around sharply. Thor, you should know what to do and what not to do. Even Hogan, who didn't like to talk the most, silently took out the meteor hammer and swung it around behind him. Not far from her, Thor looked at the group of people ready for battle feeling a little tricky, and then turned his eyes to Loki. Isn't there a goal? At the moment Loki is focused on finding Thor. He paid no attention to the actions of the three warriors of Asgard. After all, he's a big magician, so he needs to use these ridiculous methods to defend against Thor. It's understandable that he couldn't find Eren under invisibility, but he couldn't even find an invisibility cloak, right? According to common sense, the enchantment strength on the equipment is not as strong as that of the enchanter originally. But if the other party is Eren, Loki is not sure if the same applies to the other party. It was just a moment of thinking, and Loki didn't even notice that Thor had touched behind him. Snapped. Loki's thoughts were completely shattered by this slap. He turned around stiffly, gritted his teeth and said, Big brother, you actually. Snapped. I'll fight for you. In a rage, Loki directly used energy to explode, and the violent energy rushed to the surroundings in an instant. There was a bang, and the surroundings were in a mess. Stop playing, stop playing, don't be serious. I'm just joking with you. Out of the range of the blast, Thor emerged and begged Loki for mercy. Are you kidding? You try this. Loki waved his hand with an unwavering expression, and a writhing poisonous snake suddenly appeared beside Thor. No way, you come again. Don't try to stab me again this time. Thor quickly summoned Mjolnir, and decisively knocked the poisonous snake away with a hammer. Loki, you turned into a snake and stabbed me when you were eight years old, do you think I'll fall for it again? Thor said triumphantly. Snort. Seeing that Thor is no longer afraid of snakes, Loki can only snort. No way, who told me that he was not Thor's opponent? To be tricked by this guy Thor. It's all your fault. Loki glared at Eren, if he hadn't developed an invisibility cloak that was so effective and let Thor experiment, how could he be ashamed in public? Even worse, it was actually seen by the three warriors of Asgard. He can already think of the most discussed news in Asgard tomorrow. Shock. In broad daylight, the second prince Loki was killed by Thor in public. No, I can't think about it anymore. By the way, the weather these days is not suitable for going out, maybe it's better to stay at home. Good stuff. Aaron, what do you want me to do with this thing? It's very interesting. Thor takes off his cloak and loves it. Before, he was always being teased by Loki. However, after getting the invisibility cloak today, he managed to deflate Loki. The mood is called a comfort. No, absolutely not. Before Aaron could speak, the others shouted in unison. I can give it to anyone, but I can't give it to you. Thor, you are Thor, this kind of sneaky thing is definitely not what you should do. The invisibility cloak should be left to us for safekeeping. Sif snatched the invisibility cloak, looked at the others with sharp eyes again, and said in a rather cold tone, 
I will personally report this to the King of God, and no one can use the invisibility without the permission of the God King. Cloak. Also, if I let someone use the invisibility cloak to enter the women's bathhouse. HMPH. Especially you, Fandral. What is the biggest function of the invisibility cloak? Stealth. Then, you can enter any place at will. This is extremely dangerous for women. This kind of thing must be avoided from happening. That's why Sif warned everyone so solemnly. The result of Thor's use of the invisibility cloak just now has come out. Even experienced warriors like them can't find a trace, and Loki, who is a great magician, has been brutally bullied. Even Thor, who has always been relatively honest, will change his usual cuteness after getting the invisibility cloak. What about other people? Once the invisibility cloak is popularized, and there is no corresponding countermeasure, the consequences are unimaginable. Fandral raised his hand, and said in Sif's sharp gaze, Well, I'm not that kind of person. Who are you, I know very well. Playboy. Sif didn't give him a good look. Well, you're right. Fandral shrugged without saying anything. Facing such a serious Sif, they dare not say anything at all. It is not because Sif is a woman that she is modest. It's because Sif is the best of them all. Yes, they can't beat Sif. Sif is the strongest and fiercest warrior in Asgard. Despite the ridicule of others, she proved step by step with her efforts that women can also become the strongest. Definitely, royals like Odin Thor are excluded here. Eren, if you have other invisibility cloaks in your hand, I hope you don't give them to anyone else before I come back. Sif looked at Eren and begged. No problem, I haven't made many of these things. Aaron said indifferently. Then please. Sif took the invisibility cloak and left vigorously. Others, you look at me, and I look at you, looking at each other without saying a word. After a little while, Fandral said excitedly, besides the invisibility cloak, do you have other good things? Have. Have. Aaron gave an affirmative answer, and then said, in addition to making the invisibility cloak, I also developed a projectile. Throwing object. The kind that can explode. Aaron took out a round object, removed a needle, and tossed it far away. The round object exploded instantly after falling to the ground. A shallow pit was blasted. I heard that there is a weapon in Midgard called a grenade, so I combined the energy explosion magic to create a similar throwing object. I call it a magic grenade. Depending on the magic power given, its power is also different. It's the smallest one, and I have a bigger one. Seeing this scene, the others were obviously not as interested in facing the invisibility cloak. Because they are Asgard people, they are regarded as gods by Midgard people. When they look at the people of Midgard, they have a strong sense of superiority. As soon as I heard that the inspiration for this thing came from some kind of weapon in Midgard, I lost interest all of a sudden. In their view, the people of Midgard are a symbol of backwardness. What is there to see there? Moreover, the power of the magic grenade shown by Eren is indeed not worthy of attention. With armor protection, any Asgard soldier can easily withstand this level of damage. What else? It's not the only thing, is it? Thor glanced back and asked. Definitely yes, try casting thunder on me. Eren pointed to himself, motioning for Thor to shoot. What? You asked me to cast thunder on you. As soon as Thor heard this, he quit immediately, Aaron, I never shoot my partner. And you are my partner, one of the best. Seeing this, Aaron had no choice but to summon a materialized duplication with his hand, and then handed the armor to him, saying, then you try it, it will be fine now. Thor hesitated for a while, looking at the duplication that was exactly the same as Aaron, he was still a little bit hesitant to do it. Tell me first, what exactly do you want me to try? Try the defense of my enchanted armor. I have given it a small energy shield. According to my calculations, ordinary damage cannot damage it. As long as you don't use all your strength. Just as Aaron finished speaking, a voice full of surprise suddenly remembered. Wait, energy shield. Do you mean energy shield magic? How did you know it? The queen mother didn't tell me. Speaking of this, Loki immediately realized that he was suspected of surveillance, and immediately changed his words, ahem. I mean, you didn't ask the queen for advice these days, when did you learn this magic? Aaron raised his eyebrows and said, the queen once said that I can ask any teacher in the school of magic about this question. 
he did not say who taught him the power shield magic. The three names of Amora are not suitable for speaking in front of everyone. After all everyone is disgusted by the name. Once they say it, there is a high probability that they will make Eren stop interacting with each other and babble for a long time. Loki frowned, feeling more and more out of his calculations. I thought that I could know what magic Eren had learned just by wandering around Frigga's place often. But forget that the other party has this privilege. Without his knowledge, Eren also learned a magic that even he didn't know. It's just too hard to guard against. Eren, you are indeed my lifelong enemy in magic. Loki has a headache, he finds that as long as it is related to Eren, he is unpredictable, and the other party can always surprise people in unexpected ways. After being interrupted by Loki, Thor finally chose to trust Eren. He is very optimistic about Eren's magic, and now he is only shooting a duplication. Even if the energy shield in Eren's mouth can't resist it, it won't really cause any damage. Then, Thor held Mjolnir high. Dazzling thunder condenses. In the next second, the thunder pierced the sky and rushed straight to the materialized duplication. When thunder was about to approach, duplication's battle armor seemed to be stimulated, and immediately expanded a golden barrier to block thunder's attack. Seeing this, Thor's interest rose again. Come again. This time, he increased his energy output. A larger thunder snake slammed into it with a sting. Although the energy shield was still not damaged, the entity duplication was knocked back again and again by the impact. Simply no problem. Okay, it's actually able to block this level of attack, then try this again. The two defeats aroused Thor's desire to win, and this time, he almost used all his strength. The sky is affected by its divine power, and dark clouds are already gathering. Thunderbolts danced wantonly in the air. Then, under the guidance of Thor, thunder broke through the energy shield in one fell swoop with unprecedented power. Its power was only restrained for a moment, and then continued down, sending Eren duplication and his battle armor into the air. As expected, under the attack of Thor's almost full spell, the entity duplication without other measures was directly shattered. Only a broken armor was left in place. Seeing this scene, Eren's heart skipped a beat. Is this Thor's strength? This is still his unawakened state. Once awakened, under full attack, he can even knock Hela offline for a while. LV-5's energy shield is still too weak. I'm afraid, only an energy shield upgraded to LV-6 or even LV-7 can completely withstand Thor's thunder strike. Generally speaking, the enchantment on the equipment is not as good as the magic level of the enchanter originally. But Eren is different. He has the ability to reward those who work hard, and he can already endow objects with magic that is equal to his own magic level. In other words, the energy shield activated by the entity duplication armor is no different from the energy shield he uses. If it were him to resist Thor's blow, if he didn't escape, he would definitely die. Definitely. He is a magician, so it is impossible to really confront Thor head-on. Thor's thunder is divine power, both in quality and quantity, much stronger than ordinary magic. And his level of magic is not enough to advance to become a god. Perhaps only by further improvement can it become a new god-level magic. I'm so sorry Eren, I hacked your gear. After Thor destroyed the armor with one blow, he said in embarrassment. It's okay, I still have these things. Eren waved his hand to show that he didn't care, and took out a similarly enchanted armor from the space. In fact, with his magical strength, there is no need for a battle armor with an LV-5 energy shield engraved on it. But this piece of equipment has an advantage, that is, it can automatically activate the protection without actively using it. If faced with some sneak attacks, it may be able to play a gratifying role. Seeing that Eren has other armors, Thor was relieved, and at the same time wondered, there is something wrong with this attack, why do I feel that the protection of the energy shield is weaker? Based on my previous two attacks, even if the energy shield couldn't withstand my full blow, it wouldn't be so easy. Hearing Thor's question, Eren was a little surprised. It seemed that Thor was the same as he remembered, thick and thin, and not a pure reckless man. In the test, you can also perceive the hidden details in the three protections. Enchanting equipment is just a dead thing after all. Even if I endow it with a powerful magic protection ability, I don't have a steady supply of magic power for it. When all the magic power above is consumed, the protection ability will be greatly reduced. 
The first two thunderbolts have already caused it to lose a certain amount of energy. When the third attack falls, the energy is no longer enough to continue to support it, and it will naturally be easily crushed by the thunderbolt. This is the flaw of enchanted equipment. Especially enchanted equipment that requires a lot of magic support. Its original protection depends entirely on the magic it is given and the magic that comes with it. When Aaron made the enchanted armor, he didn't give much mana reserve. After all, it's just an experiment. When it is time to create a god-level armor such as the destroyer armor, it will not be too late to infuse a lot of magic power into it. It is also true that a battle armor that loses its magic power supply looks so, vulnerable. This defect is actually a common phenomenon. Looking at the spears, sharp swords and even shields in the hands of all warriors, they have actually undergone various enchantments and are not pure melee weapons. If necessary, they can even unleash energy beams on the enemy. But they are not magicians. Once the magic power in the weapon is exhausted, the enchanted equipment will become ordinary Uru metal equipment, and will no longer have the sharpness and protection bonus brought by enchantment. So it is generally unnecessary, they will not use energy attacks indiscriminately like other civilizations. Moreover, enchanted equipment is not the magician himself, and generally does not have the feature of automatic energy absorbing. Even though Uru Metal has strong magic conductivity and certain magic power reserves, it is still a relatively rare metal. The metal that can be mass-produced will not be so strong no matter how strong it is. Just like this quiz. If it was Aaron, although it would still be broken by Thor's full blow in the end, it would definitely last longer. So it is. It seems that my Meow Hammer is the most powerful. I have never worried that it will not be able to take me to fly because of insufficient energy. Thor touched the Meow Hammer like a dog, so proud that people couldn't help but beat him up. Loki was still thinking about other things, but when he heard Thor say that, he looked straight at Mjolnir. Those salivating little eyes could hardly be hidden from a long distance away. Then his eyes moved up, staring at Thor resentfully. If I were the one who got Mjolnir, maybe I'm Thor. And what about Thor? Odin is so eccentric. Why didn't you give me an artifact, but gave it to a reckless man instead? Unlike Loki, Eren simply ignores Thor's self-satisfaction. Mjolnir is a product jointly created by Odin and Dwarf King, and it is also Odin at its peak. And how long has he been learning magic? The time to focus on enchanting magic is even less. Eren didn't think he'd surpass Odin on the magical level so quickly. Even so, he still firmly believes that in the future, he will be able to create an artifact that surpasses Mjolnir and the Storm Axe. This battle armor is a good thing. For the sake of friends, can you help us get one of these things? Fandral leaned over with a flattering face. Although the test of the energy shield's defense was not perfect, it still attracted the attention of others. They will not underestimate its protective power because of this. As strong as Thor, it took three thunderbolts to break through its protection. If it were them, there would be nothing they could do until their energy was exhausted. They don't want Thor to have the power of Thor and control the thunder that destroys everything. If they can have such a piece of equipment on the battlefield, their chances of survival will be greatly increased. For things that can repay their lives, except for a powerful person like Thor, who would dislike it. Definitely no problem, in fact, I have prepared one for you all. Eren raised his hand and summoned several armors, each with streamers of mysterious magic patterns. Thank you Aaron, I'll buy you a drink next time. Fandral took one away and played with it carefully. Hogan and Vostag also happily took over. Oops, I'm a little worried about whether I can put it on. I remember that I gained some weight in the past two days. The battle armor Vostag held in his hand was obviously a few sizes larger than the others, but he still had concerns about the wrong size. When others were drinking, he was drinking, but more was eating meat. Weight changes almost every day. Ha ha ha, I told you to control your mouth well. If you can't put on the battle armor, you may lose weight in the past few days. Fandir gloated. Losing weight. Oh no. That's definitely the cruelest thing, I can't lose my barbecue. Bostag was terrified, already thinking about that painful day. Don't worry, I specially chose the extra large size, which is much bigger than you were a month ago, so there will be no problem. Aaron smiled reassuringly. Good brother. Come to my house when you are free, and I will treat you to the best barbecue in Asgard. 
Bostag said gratefully. Well, it won't be a good show. Fandral shook his head regretfully, with an extremely disappointed expression. HMPH, wait for me, Fandral, next time I will tell the girls all about your, good things. No, I was wrong. Sighed. Loki looked at the armor left in Aaron's hand, and his heart moved. One piece, two pieces, three pieces. There are still three pieces. Besides Sip and Thor, I have one too. Aaron so good. Loki would love to get one, but he's a little scared that Aaron doesn't have one for him. His relationship with the other party is not considered familiar. They even secretly regard each other as competitors. I want to laugh at every chance I get. If it were him who was being targeted so much, he would definitely not give the other party a good look. Loki, take it. To Loki's surprise, Aaron threw him an enchanted armor. This confused Loki. I really have it. Did Aaron really consider himself a friend? But I, for some reason, the senses returned by the cold armor in his hand were still a little warm. Aaron didn't know what Loki was thinking, he just felt that it would be unreasonable not to prepare one for Loki. After all, we usually get together. Whether they are friends or not, at least in the eyes of others, the relationship between them is good. Coupled with Aaron's sense of Loki, it's not bad. I just feel repulsed based on the name and blood of the opponent's god of tricks. Moreover, it is just a battle armor with an LV-5 energy shield, so there is no need to pay too much attention to it. Aaron looked to Thor, who waved his hand that he didn't need the armor. He is very satisfied with his battle armor, and it also contains a deeper meaning, that is, it represents the identity of the heir of Asgard, and there is no need to change a battle suit for a shield. Loki's armor also has meaning and is his favorite decoration. Aaron gave him just an ordinary armor, which didn't satisfy his aesthetics. But he is a magician, and it is easy to change the appearance of the armor. As soon as his hand touched it, the enchanted armor became exactly the same as the one on his body. Shapeshifting. One of Loki's signature spells. For this magic, Aaron is very greedy. This magic has a wide range of uses, and it is one of several magics he wants. By the way, this time I went to see Frigg, just in time to learn the shapeshifting technique. After chatting with a few people, Aaron greeted Thor and the others, and separated from them to the Academy of Magic. Come to the School of Magic. Frigg has been waiting for a long time. It was still the classroom where the last meeting was. This time, besides Frigga, Irene was also there. Seeing Aaron coming, Frigga showed a soft smile, and rarely joked, Irene, Aaron seems to be a little different from what you said, I heard you said that he is very interested in new magic, why since he studied with me, I haven't seen it for days. Could it be that I'm old and not as attractive as young and beautiful teachers like you? It's not like that, Queen. Although it was clear that Frigga was not angry, Irene still hurriedly said, Aaron just learned too many complicated magics, and it takes some time to settle down. If it were us, I'm afraid we would just be proficient in these magics. It will take hundreds of years. No matter how evil he behaves, he is just a magic apprentice. Apprentice. I don't think it's that simple. Have you ever seen an apprentice who can make magic equipment so quickly? Frigga's eyes fell on Aaron's armor, and based on her experience, it was easy to see the difference. Although the battle armor worn by other soldiers has also been enchanted, it is the exclusive equipment of the soldiers. Aaron has not passed the warrior assessment and is not eligible to obtain it. Moreover, the magical fluctuations on Aaron's armor are stronger than the armor worn by the elite guarding the Golden Hall. Obviously, this is a powerful piece of magic equipment. What? Have you learned enchanting? Hearing this, Irene looked at Aaron quickly, with a bit of anxiety and reproach in her words. Didn't I say that the most important thing for you now is to learn other magics, and when you have mastered those magics, you can learn more about them. Consider spending time studying enchanting magic. Going to learn enchanting now will only waste precious time, other than that, it is useless. It's all my fault. It's all my fault. If I hadn't given you the magic book back then, you wouldn't have become interested in enchanting magic. Erin blamed herself very much. She thought it was her own fault that Aaron went, astray. At that time, I was amazed by Aaron's monstrous magic ability, and in order to delay time, I took out enchanting magic. Unexpectedly, the expedient measure the time actually delayed Aaron's learning of other more useful magic. In this regard, Aaron only said, 
I won't waste time. I followed your suggestion to learn other magics before starting to learn enchanting magic. It didn't take me much time. Really? Aaron asked in doubt. Aaron nodded, as he said, he really didn't spend much time on enchanting. While learning enchanting, he did not forget to step up to improve other magic. The biggest improvement among them is materialization magic. It won't be long before it will be upgraded to LV6. Aaron is looking forward to the power of LV6 materialization magic. He had a hunch that would give him a huge boost. If it weren't for Amora telling him that Odin was preparing for Thor's coronation, Aaron would not come back until he upgraded the materialization magic. Coupled with the fact that Frigel has repeatedly pushed back on his teaching arrangements, Aaron decided to come here first in order to prevent Frigel from overthinking. On the way, he even revealed the news of several kinds of magic equipment to Thor and others in advance. It was just to spread it out with their hands, and let everyone know that he was studying enchantment while staying at home during this period of time. It seems that you have gained a lot in enchanting during this period of time. Frigga walked in slowly, looking at the magic armor up close. After a while, his face became serious, and his tone did not hide his appreciation. I believe what you said, just the energy shield magic engraved on the magic armor has already surpassed me. You actually have time to master enchanting skills so deeply while learning to improve other magics. It's hard to imagine how you did it. Frigga even asserted, except for Odin, your enchantment ability has surpassed any other magician. Facing Frigga's praise, Eren was very calm. With heaven rewarding hard work, isn't it possible to change anyone? If you can't even do this, what a waste. I'm afraid it's not even as good as a do. Eren was flat, but Irene was not. Hearing Frigga's praise, the smile on his face could not be hidden for a long time, and he felt a sense of pride. I no longer blame myself. That's right, ordinary magicians can't do two things at the same time, but for evildoers, it probably doesn't apply. Frigga hadn't been entangled in enchanting for long. She was amazed at Eren's ability, but at the moment she was a magic teacher, responsible for guiding Eren's magic and guiding him to a path that was beneficial to Asgard. So after the fun is over, let's get back to the topic. As your teacher, it took me so long to teach you a spell. As a teacher, I am very unqualified. I remember Irene mentioned to me that she taught you many spells on the first day. At this point, I am not as competent as Irene. As compensation, the magic taught this time is still up to you. Frigga deserves to be the most popular queen, a few words can make people feel close. Obviously it was Eren who delayed the teaching progress several times, but he still took the responsibility on himself. Even Eren felt a sense of closeness when he heard this. On the way here, I saw Loki used a magic, he can change the shape and appearance of the armor according to his own ideas. Shapeshifting. Frigga immediately thought of what kind of magic it was, and then thought of something else. He shook his head and chuckled lightly, speaking of which, the child Loki caused a lot of trouble with the shapeshifting technique, and it always gives people headaches. After you learn the shapeshifting magic, don't make people worry like him. After sighing for a moment, before Eren could answer, she began to introduce the principle of shapeshifting. The shapeshifting technique in the traditional sense is a kind of effect of changing the shapeshifting shape of oneself or other people or other objects to achieve camouflage. The original nature of its object does not change, only the appearance. It's like this. Frigg cast a spell with a wave of her hand, turning a chair not far away into a horse. Although its shape is no different from that of a real horse, Eren's perception clearly detects the abnormality of the horse. Horses are still dead. See it. Frigga said firmly, with your magical attainments, you can't hide this level of shapeshifting from you. After all, this is just the most traditional shapeshifting technique. The most traditional shapeshifting technique. Eren's heart moved, could there be a deeper shapeshifting technique? Frigga's next words proved Eren's conjecture. A more esoteric twist on traditional shapeshifting. Compared to the false camouflage created by traditional shapeshifting techniques, this advanced magic can permanently change an object into another object. Achieving permanent shapeshifting. And has some physical properties of the object after shapeshifting. Definitely, although shapeshifting can be done permanently, if an object originally has strong energy, it can still have the ability to use energy after shapeshifting, and even rely on huge energy to forcibly reverse shapeshifting. 
Hearing this, Aaron suddenly remembered something. Frog, Thor. In one universe, Loki once turned Thor into a frog. This is beyond the scope of traditional shapeshifting. Aaron also thought about how to achieve such a realistic effect simply by changing the camouflage of the object. Unless it's an illusion. But what Loki used several times was clearly not an illusion. And a blanket to fluff yourself up with. Phantom. Wrong. Traditional shapeshifting. Not right either. How can simple shapeshifting make an object have the effect of a blanket? Now hearing what Frigga said, Aaron suddenly became enlightened. Loki will also have advanced shapeshifting magic. However, this magic must have a great demand for magic power. Moreover, it cannot be fully effective for objects that originally have strong energy. For example, Thor the Frog still has the power of Thor. Aaron also thought of a master shapeshifting art, Odin. When Loki was a baby, Odin made Loki look like an Asgardian. Even now Loki is still unaware of the shapeshifting technique applied to him. It can be seen that Odin's shapeshifting skills are so high. While thinking about it, Frigg also mentioned other shortcomings of the advanced shapeshifting technique, and the magic power is the biggest flaw. To cast this magic, it is best to have huge magic power. The object of the shapeshifting technique is best to be a dead object, or the energy is not as good as yourself, and you don't have much magic attainment, otherwise the effect will be greatly reduced. Aaron nodded in understanding, but he wanted advanced shapeshifting more. In fact, even if he learned the traditional shapeshifting technique, it doesn't matter. With the existence of gold finger, it will definitely be upgraded to the advanced version of shapeshifting technique. However, if you can skip this stage directly and learn the advanced version of magic, it will definitely save time. However, to Aaron's surprise, Frigg had something to say. Through the study of your phantom magic, from phantom to real individual, this gave me great inspiration. Since then, I have started to think about the possibility of further improvement of other magic. And then I discovered the potential of shapeshifting. The advanced shapeshifting technique, because it changes one object into another, involves material transformation, and contains quite profound knowledge, so I think it has the potential to be further explored. Among them, I discovered a deeper level of magic, molecular rearrangement. As the name suggests, molecular rearrangement can decompose and reassemble objects at the molecular level. If shapeshifting can do this level of change, it's a quantum leap forward. Aaron's heart shuddered. Because according to what Frigg said, it is very possible for shapeshifting to advance to molecular rearrangement. The shapeshifting technique is already quite powerful, if it really becomes a molecular rearrangement, it will be even more terrifying. It's a pity. I don't have the energy to study molecular rearrangements anymore. That's why I'm going to hand over this task to you. With your phantom magic attainments, it's very likely that you will complete this magic progression. Frigg is old too. There is also too much waste in magic. Her magical ability, not even comparable to Loki. It is very difficult to study molecular rearrangements. It is really powerless. Next, Frigga began to talk about the principles of traditional shapeshifting and advanced shapeshifting. Then he began to talk about his research on advanced shapeshifting. As she said, she wanted Eren to accomplish the feat. Say it bluntly. Once completed, with just this one spell, one can become the god of magic. The other side. Golden Hall. Sif finds Odin with the invisibility cloak. As the king of god here. When he came to the door, Sif first asked the guard. The doorman nodded. Sif was about to go in, when he caught sight of the cloak, the steps he had just taken suddenly stopped. Do you want to take it in? This can more intuitively test the ability limit of the invisibility cloak. But after thinking about it, I felt that doing so was disrespectful to the king of God. Sif gave up the idea of testing and walked in directly. Great the king of God. Sif went in and greeted Odin. Odin looked outside the door, but he didn't see Thor, so he asked, Sif, why isn't Thor with you? They just met Eren, talking about enchanting. Sif raised the cloak of invisibility and relayed the story to Odin. Odin listened patiently, and even twitched slightly when he heard the good thing, Thor did with the invisibility cloak. I feel a little helpless in my heart. Bear boy. After Sif shared his worries and Eren's plan, Odin said, Loki can't see Thor under the invisibility cloak. Yes, Loki did not find Thor's location at the time. Sif affirmed. Odin fell silent. 
There was a flash of surprise in some cloudy eyes. He was sure of Aaron's magical ability, but he never expected that the other party not only possessed an ability beyond the reach of ordinary people in magic, but was still so outstanding in enchanting skills. Enchanting is a relatively large system in the magic system. It includes a lot of scientific knowledge, and also integrates a lot of magical knowledge. Among them, imparting one's own magic to other objects is a rather difficult skill. The difficulty of this kind of enchantment is not inferior to learning a magic. Moreover, each type of magic has different enchanting techniques. Aaron not only learned the enchanting skills of invisibility magic, but also allowed Thor to hide from Loki who often used invisibility magic. It can be seen that the opponent's attainments in stealth magic and enchanting skills. After a moment of silence, Odin ordered, take it and try it. Sif put on the cloak without hesitation, and disappeared in the next second. Odin frowned, first tentatively looking for Sif's location. However, based on the perception of the facial features alone, there is no way to find the flaw of the invisibility cloak. Good. Odin nodded approvingly. Once this level of invisibility cloak is popularized, it can indeed greatly strengthen the strength of the army. Next, Odin began using the god's telekinesis perception Sif. Odin's the god's telekinesis is so powerful that it can even spread across the entire realm of Asgard when used at full power. Although he can't see everything, as long as he wants, he can easily perceive the invading enemies in the entire Asgard domain. Especially in Asgard, his strength has also been greatly enhanced and he has become extremely powerful. The god's telekinesis has also been blessed by god's domain, and almost no one can escape his perception. Um. Odin was surprised again, he spent a certain amount of the god's telekinesis but couldn't find Sif. No, there is a situation. Found it. Sif in the invisible state felt incredible when he saw the frowning Odin, and subconsciously stepped towards him. However, with just this movement, Odin found the location of Sif. Only by moving can we see the flaws. Aaron, you are amazing. Odin motioned for Sif to stop, telling her to stay where she was. Then Heimdall, who guards Bifrost, is notified. He wants to test whether Heimdall also has the ability to see through invisibility cloaks. Bifrost hub. Heimdall's posture is still so straight and firm, like a pine tree in a storm, no matter the wind and rain, it will not move. At this time, his perception came to Odin's the god's telekinesis. After scanning the surroundings, making sure that nothing was missed, he turned and headed towards the golden hall. After a while, great the father of God. Heimdall's voice is sonorous and powerful, only Odin's tall figure is in his eyes. Heimdall, do you see anything out of the ordinary here? Odin said something mysteriously. Although he didn't understand what Odin meant, Heimdall still carried out Odin's order firmly, casting sharp eyes around. Nothing. He shook his head, indicating that he found nothing unusual. Use the all-seeing eye. Odin was not surprised by this. Heimdall nodded, his eyes flashed a golden light, and under this gaze, there was no way to hide any evil spirits. However, even so, he still did not see Sif in the invisible state. The all-seeing eye is very strong, allowing him to see the distant starry sky through space, and also allows him to hear the slightest sound. It is because of the all-seeing eye that Heimdall can guard the gates of Asgard as a patron saint. But now, just use the Sif of the invisibility cloak to, blind, the Patronus. Sif trembled, shocked by the powerful invisibility effect of the invisibility cloak. So is Odin. He frowned. If the Patronus of Asgard can't see through the invisibility cloak, is he still qualified to be the Patronus? What if enemies could also have this level of invisibility? So what should I do now? Heimdall, look where Sif is. Heimdall didn't know what happened, seeing Odin's unwavering expression, he didn't know that he had done something wrong. When I heard that I was looking for the location of Sif, an unacceptable idea popped up in my heart. Could it be that Sif is nearby? The unusual place that the king of God asked me to find, is Sif. Despite his uneasiness, Heimdall, with a firm will, quickly stabilized his emotions and devoted himself to finding the location of his Sif. However, before he turned his head to look for it, he saw Sif standing in front of him. What? Heimdall's eyes widened. Obviously, I looked around just now, but there was no one at all. But now they find that Sif is right in front of them. Heimdall has a special ability. 
The all-seeing eye gives him the vision to see through everything. If he keeps it fully open, he will constantly receive a lot of information. Even if he is a god, the brain is difficult to handle such a huge amount of knowledge, and it is easy to collapse. Therefore, Heimdall usually controls ability consciously, and only sees what he wants to see. Many things are subconsciously ignored. If someone tells him to look at a specific person or object at this time, he can quickly find the location of the other party. Now look at Sif, that's why. When Odin tells him to look for Sif, he can fully activate the all-seeing eye and lock the opponent's position immediately. Seeing this scene, Odin still did not loosen his frown. Has Eren's invisibility magic attainment reached this level? Just the invisibility cloak he made has such a function, if it is him. Doesn't it mean that as long as he wants, he can break into any place he wants without being noticed? Thinking of this possibility, Odin couldn't help but struggle. So far, Eren is a good kid. It's just that his magic ability is amazing. Terribly strong. Monster-like existence. Odin also didn't know if he could continue to see Eren in the same light. And, now there's another problem. Invisibility cloak. Have to say, the invisibility cloak works really well, very well. Too good to put it down. It's so good it's scary. Yes, fear. Eren is a good boy, but others are not necessarily good boys. He and Sif's thoughts coincided with each other, and they thought deeper. If the invisibility cloak continues to spread, it will fall into the hands of careerists. That may have unimaginable consequences. You know, even Heimdall needs to know the opponent's name to see through the invisibility effect. But he can't monitor everyone all the time. If you are not careful, you may be taken advantage of. Therefore, the invisibility cloak cannot be popularized. The warriors of Asgard fear nothing. They are the most powerful warriors in the Nine Realms. Even against brutal enemies, they cannot be defeated head on. Invisibility cloak, there is no need to use it. I don't want the warriors guarding the Nine Realms to become despicable people who only attack sneakily. Speaking of this, Sif immediately understood what Odin meant. The King of God doesn't want invisibility cloaks to spread. She knows what to do. Understood, God King. Sif handed the invisibility cloak to Odin, and turned to leave. Until Sif disappeared, Heimdall said in shame, Sorry, I have shamed you. It's not your fault, it's just that Eren's magic ability is too strong. Odin didn't blame him. Although the other party did not find Sif in the first place, at least after getting the prompt, they still found the other party. No one in the world is omniscient. Even if Heimdall mastered the all-seeing eye, he couldn't really see through everything. Not to mention him, even Odin himself is powerless sometimes. For example, life. As strong as him, he can't avoid death. There are also those unfathomable existences hidden in the depths of the universe. There, there is something that makes people tremble from the heart. Odin's eyes dimmed, he was already unable to do what he wanted. Even, he wasn't sure how long Asgard would be at peace. Ragnarok. And that person who has been sealed for thousands of years. I'm afraid you resent me even more. Odin lost his mind. After some time, Heimdall's call brought him back to his senses. The situation in the Nine Realms is all right. Heimdall nodded, the land of ice titans still abides by your agreement, the Fire King is still sighing there, and the rebels in Vanaheim have completely subsided under Thor's conquest. Under your leadership, the Nine Realms are very peaceful now. Hearing the satisfactory answer, Odin's mood improved slightly. I don't know what will happen in the future, but at least for now, the Nine Realms are very stable. Okay. Now that's the case, Thor's coronation can be on the agenda. Heimdall, tell all the people of Asgard that in a week, they will welcome a young king. Yes, the great king of God. Heimdall's mind also became complicated, that is, he was reluctant to give up Odin's abdication, but he was also excited about Thor's enthronement. At this time when the new and old kings are changing, it is undoubtedly the best thing for the Nine Realms to be able to maintain peace. I believe that after this coronation ceremony, Asgard will go on a stronger road. Just as Heimdall left with mixed feelings, Odin's the god's telekinesis side in his head. Pay more attention to Eren. Magic monster Eren. Maker of the invisibility cloak. Heimdall kept walking while pondering, showing nothing unusual. He just nodded vaguely when there was no one around, as if responding to Odin. 
inside the Golden Hall. Odin looked at Heimdall, who had long gone, and sighed again. Eren is a good boy, but a good boy sometimes goes astray. As Loki, he is also a good boy. As a king, Odin has a mind that is tolerant to all kinds of people, and he will not feel jealous because there is a person with extraordinary ability among his subjects. He also believes that no matter how strong Eren ability is, it cannot be stronger than the power brought by the blood of the god king. Thor has the purest god bloodline, has the potential to be stronger than him. He firmly believes that Thor has the power to suppress all unstable factors. It's just that Thor still needs time to grow. Before Thor fully grows up, he needs to minimize the danger for him and ensure the stability of God's domain. Let Heimdall pay more attention to Eren, there is this consideration. Eren's magical ability is too strong. He was so strong that even if he had no intention of doing bad things, he still had to be guarded against. Comma. Academy of Magic. You performed a permanent shapeshifting technique seriously, and gained a little bit, the proficiency of the permanent shapeshifting book plus one. Open black lens bracket you are serious, close black lens bracket. Aaron has learned all the details about the advanced shapeshifting technique from Frigga. It also includes Frigga's research experience. Not long after listening, he started practicing the permanent shapeshifting technique directly in front of Frigg. The previous sense of deja vu came over. Frigga and Irene are no strangers to this. After a few simple exercises, Aaron stopped. He also needs to retain his mojo. As for Frigga's high expectations, Aaron replied more simply. Leave it to me, and I will give you a satisfactory answer. Words are full of confidence. To be honest, if anyone in the Nine Realms is most likely to advance the shapeshifting technique to molecular rearrangement, it is definitely him. Aaron still has this confidence. It's nothing more than being more diligent. Put more effort into it. I believe that the powerful ability of molecular rearrangement will be mastered soon. Definitely, before that, he needs to improve the materialization magic first. It feels uncomfortable to feel that Sora has powerful magic, but is unable to exert his true power due to insufficient knowledge reserve. After the magic guidance was over, Frigg waited patiently for Eren to stop practicing, and said seriously. By the way, Eren, I sincerely invite you on behalf of Thor to attend his coronation in a week's time. As a good friend of his, I have reserved a seat for you, with a clear view of Thor's coronation. Um. Finally come. Eren came back and waited for this news. Although it has been rumored that Thor is about to be crowned, the exact time has not been set. I thought Thor would say it himself, but he didn't mention it in the meeting just now. So he has been waiting for someone to tell him. With his magical ability and relationship with Thor, he will definitely attract the attention of the upper echelons. It's just a little bit different from the imagination, which is too formal. Frigg actually personally invited him. It really flattered him a little. I'm excited to see that day come. Although there was a smile on the face, there was no such surprise in the heart. Because the coronation means that war is coming. Winter is coming. After inviting Eren, Frigg left. As a queen, she usually has a lot of things. It is impossible to delay too much time for anyone alone. So far, everything seems to be moving in a good direction. Thor is about to complete his coronation, and Eren has gone farther and farther on the road of magic, treating people with kindness and courtesy. The future of Asgard is bright. Thinking of this, Frigga's footsteps became more cheerful and powerful. What could be more gratifying than seeing your home grow and prosper? Halfway. Frigg met Loki who came to look for her. Mother, is Eren at the academy? Loki stepped forward quickly, and glanced behind Frigg, with a somewhat inexplicable look on his face. Seeing his expression, Frigg was slightly moved. Loki boy, changed. As Loki's adoptive mother, Frigga is absolutely no worse than any real mother. She cares and takes care of Loki even more than Thor. Because she pitied Loki, the brilliance of motherhood made her devote more effort to this child who was separated from his parents since childhood. Frigga couldn't bear the fact that Odin concealed his life experience and responsibilities from him. But for Asgard, for the Nine Realms, she acquiesced to this matter. It's just that in normal times, he cares more about Loki. So she knows Loki well, and she knows that the kid craves more attention and is willing to play tricks to get more attention. But today, 
Frigga saw some changes in Loki, and there was a touch of sincerity and hope in his eyes. Aaron practices shapeshifting at school, that's where we last met, do you have anything to ask him? Nobody else. Loki looked slightly happy, he wanted to make sure of one thing, but he had to be alone with Aaron. No, Irene is gone. When Frigga left, she also called Irene away, leaving the study space to Aaron alone. Understood. I'll go find Aaron first. Loki suppressed his excitement and nodded, and when he was leaving, he turned around and asked, Mother, what do you think of my enchanting ability? Frigga immediately understood his plan. It was obvious that he wanted to learn enchanting and take another route to gain attention. However, not everyone is Aaron, who can learn magic and enchanting at the same time, and can guarantee to go hand in hand at the speed of selecting a superhuman. Loki. Frigga just opened her mouth, and just by looking at her face, Loki knew what she was going to say, so he quickly waved his hands. I see, actually sometimes when I think about it, the second magician in the Nine Realms is pretty good too. After all, he is the man destined to be king. As a Mingjun, a king, one must have a big enough heart. Loki also believes that with his own wisdom, he can absolutely control everything. The other side. Open black lens bracket you cast the materialization magic seriously once, and you will gain a little, close black lens bracket. You have performed the materialization magic seriously once, and you have gained a little, the materialization magic proficiency plus 5, your materialization magic has been upgraded, close black lens bracket. After Frigga left, Aaron put down the study of shapeshifting and turned his magic power into materialization magic. Before Loki felt it, the materialization magic that was about to be upgraded finally ushered in the moment of upgrade. LB6. B6 of physical magic. I don't know how much difference it can make. Aaron was thrilled. According to previous experience, the magic after LB5, every upgrade will bring about huge changes. It far exceeds the previous improvement effect of LB5. Just like energy absorption, LB6 a energy absorption solves his dilemma of not having enough magic power to a certain extent. It would be great if the improved materialization magic could solve the shortcomings of LB5. Aaron couldn't wait to try it out. First a magic armor. He glanced at the battle armor inadvertently, and began to wave his hands to construct the prototype. According to the magic level of LB5, it is not a problem to manufacture an ordinary armor, but the premise is to know the structure of Ulu metal. In this way, it is possible to materialize a battle armor that is exactly the same in terms of structure and appearance. Otherwise, it will be in vain. Not to mention the energy shield magic attached to it. Increase the difficulty of construction. Now, Aaron deliberately ignored the enchantment, and only visually imagined the magic armor. While constructing its appearance, it is still imagining its original characteristics and abilities. This is undoubtedly a huge challenge. Once successful, it means that he can ignore the principles of things and create other objects with energy alone. The mana is being consumed crazily. Aaron carefully perceives that the mana consumption is still within an acceptable range. So he ignored the magic power and continued the illusion. Since it was the first time and had no experience, Aaron perfected the details as much as possible, which took the Emperor's effort. Until the moment when the armor was formed, Aaron breathed a sigh of relief. Then began to test the function of the armor. The most intuitive test is actual combat. Directly summon an energy duplication and make it wear magic armor. And Aaron took out his long sword and threw it at him. Boom. It worked. To be precise, it should be half the battle. The materialized magic armor has the ability to activate the energy shield. This means that he can really ignore the principle and imagine its ability to create a magic weapon out of thin air. Then it's time to test its strength, and whether it has the properties of Ulu metal originally. Seeing this, Aaron came to the open space with duplication. Just want to use energy explosion. But think about it again, energy explosion is a kind of group explosion magic that spreads around. The lethality is not concentrated enough, and it may not be able to break the shield defense. Then he thought of the thunder that Thor had summoned before. That kind of tyrannical natural force can bring a strong impact only visually. How about trying to summon thunder? Aaron was eager to try. Although he doesn't have the power of thunder, but he has materialization magic, he can make illusions and then manifest them. Isn't it thunder? 
To put it bluntly, it is just a natural phenomenon. He even created the illusion of the energy shield, so summoning the thunder is also very reasonable. With this in mind, Aaron started directly. Imagining the scene where Thor summoned thunder, he lifted his hand up to build a huge amounts of phantom space. For a while, the wind is howling, and the clouds are gathering. The magic power crazily surged into the sky, converging into beating lightning bolts. Then, prickly, thunder pierced the sky, accompanied by piercing sounds, and slashed towards energy duplication at a speed far beyond vision. The scene where the thunder and the energy shield collide is the same as when Thor attacked before. Except Aaron doesn't have a meow hammer in his hand. This blow almost consumed the strongest thunder entity phantom that Aaron condensed with all his magic power. It should be said that it was thunder originally. At this moment, the magic power is no longer pure magic power, but simulated as an extremely aggressive and extremely violent thunder. Click. Aaron waved his hand again, and all the thunder from the sky rushed down, smashing the energy shield to pieces in a destructive gesture. The remaining power of thunder still shatters the energy duplication. As for the battle armor, it is also not immune. After suffering a huge blow, he couldn't hold on after all turning into pure energy and dissipating in the air. Energy absorption. Aaron disarms all materialized illusions, taking the escaped energy back again. Barely restored to half of the previous level. Eyes full of surprise. It really worked. Ignoring the principle, ignoring the ingredients, and only using magic power, the magic armor was created. Compared with the real battle armor, its defensive power is not much different. Even if there is, it won't be too big. But there are also flaws. This kind of magic that directly turns illusions into entities is a great test for magic power. Especially the later thunder, which emptied all of Eren's magic power. And in terms of power, it is still incomparable to Thor's full blow. Even so, Eren was not discouraged. Thor has the power of Thor, 1,500 years of accumulation, especially what he can catch up to overnight. And, once he got the casket of ancient winters, the problem would be solved. That contains planet-level energy. Enough for him to spend a long time without drying up. Maybe, at that time, you can try to materialize Mjolnir. Mjolnir's abilities are diverse enough to create a first-rate superhero. You know, as an ordinary Earthling, Jane Foster can transform into a female Thor in one fell swoop after getting the shattered Mjolnir. In terms of strength, she is not even worse than the Hammer God. Eren doesn't know how much ability Odin has endowed in it. With his current level of magic hair, the scope is not enough. It is quite difficult to create an identical artifact. But with LV6 materialization magic, it's different, as long as the magic power is enough, why not create 10 pieces? Even at that time, it is not a problem to see Mjolnir or not. Also at the moment, the sound of hurried footsteps came from a distance. Aaron looked over, frowning. Loki. At this moment, Loki who rushed over looked at the messy scene in surprise. I looked around, but I didn't see him using W Brother Blue. Big Brother, come out, I won't get caught this time. The thunder just now made Loki think that Thor was here too. After all, apart from that guy, who can control the power of thunder? In order to avoid repeating the black history, Loki took precautions directly this time, for fear that Thor would attack again. Don't look for him, he's not here, it was just an illusion I created. Eren explained. In order to avoid causing a sensation, Eren deliberately created another phantom space outside to shield the senses of other people in the academy. Since it is just an illusion created casually, once someone steps into the illusion space, the shielding effect will be lost. Phantom. Impossible. Loki is taken aback. Such a real and magnificent scene, you actually call it an illusion. Just kidding me. From a long distance, Loki could feel the majestic energy emitted by those thunders. Just as disgusting as the thunder summoned by that stupid big brother. Loki knows that Eren's illusion magic is extremely high, far surpassing himself. But he still didn't think that illusion could create that sense of reality. What now? Aaron stretched out his index finger, and a ball of thunder jumped briskly on his fingertips. He stretched out his finger, and the thunder grazed Loki's ear. Loki protected his ears belatedly, and took half a step back unconsciously. Aaron has the thunder. No, it's the illusion of thunder. 
Loki was startled at first, but figured it out again. No matter how real the illusion of thunder is, it is only an illusion after all. In addition to deceiving the senses, it cannot cause damage to the enemy. Nothing to be afraid of. With Loki at the moment's magical attainments, it is far from Asgard, how can it be understood that illusions can also become real? If Loki looked back at this moment and looked carefully, he could see it. The place hit by that thunderbolt was already pitch black. Loki, what do you want from me? Aaron had already seen that Loki was looking for something, and that was what made him curious. What is there for Loki to find himself? What do you think of Thor? Loki asks after a moment's deliberation. Um, what's the meaning? Aaron glanced at the other party in surprise, what the hell is that sense of anticipation? How does it feel to be ready for a showdown? Aaron thought about it carefully, he hadn't dealt with Loki much recently. Whole relationship does not exist. That is, I sent a magic armor not long ago. Could it be because of a piece of equipment that Loki was moved? No way. Unsure of Loki's true thoughts, Aaron pondered his words and said, Thor is a powerful and fearless warrior. Yes, he's a fighter. As if meeting a confidant, Loki said excitedly, Thor is a warrior, a warrior who only knows brute force. Loki, what do you mean? Aaron asked knowingly. Loki looked at Aaron carefully, without any perception of strong antipathy, and the expectation in his heart was even stronger. 470 is the coronation in a week, do you think Thor is suitable? Loki's question was very particular, he didn't directly express his dissatisfaction with Thor, but secretly asked Aaron's thoughts. Suitable. Fit to be king of Asgard. Thor is not suitable, only suitable. You. Let me tell you, the three of you are not suitable. Hela is bloodthirsty and aggressive. Thor is conceited and reckless, irritable and warlike. As for Loki. Although he is very smart and scheming, he can escape from danger every time. Even relying on bitter tricks, he easily divorced the temporarily formed Avengers. He is indeed the god of tricks. But in Eren's opinion, the most inappropriate one is Loki. The reason is very simple, encourage. In the Marvel world, strength is the most important thing. Relying on intrigue and cunning, Loki can get out of danger many times. But once he becomes the king of Asgard, the master of the Nine Realms, it is undoubtedly a dream to rely on tricks to preserve the territory. As a king, you have to take care of the people below, not like now, you only need to protect yourself. Even if it is a negotiation, one has to be strong enough to be qualified to be on the negotiating table. Otherwise, you can only be enslaved by others in the end. Taken together, none of these three people is suitable to become a king. Either lack of cunning, or lack of force, or character flaws. Sometimes when you think about it carefully, Odin's choice may be really right. Although Thor is reckless and conceited, he has inherited the true power of God and has great potential. And it's not that he has no mind, it's just that he hasn't discovered it yet, and there is a lot of room for shaping. But if there is no strength, it is flawed. Unless Loki accepts the blood of the Frost Titan, holds the casket of ancient winters, and barely possesses the strength of a king. But when Hela appeared, it was nothing in the end. These thoughts were fleeting, and looking at Loki who was full of expectation, Eren didn't know how to speak for a moment. Maybe wake up Loki. If Loki can understand the reason, maybe Asgard can continue to maintain peace for a while, and he can continue to grow stronger in a fairly quiet environment. At this time, the brain's alarm bells suddenly go off. A mysterious and mysterious sense of spying swept around. Aaron didn't make a sound, but he had an answer in his heart. Heimdall. Being watched so soon. Odin, as expected of you. As one of the few boss-level powerhouses in Marvel who can die of old age naturally, Odin's strength and strategy are top-notch. This, I have to admit. But Aaron wasn't panicking. Since Heimdall's gaze can be sensed, it's not a big problem. But now, Eren was thinking about how to answer Loki. This is actually not difficult to answer. Just tell the truth. In fact, Odin also understands in his heart that Thor is not suitable to succeed the throne at this moment, but he doesn't have much time, which means he is a little paralyzed. Even so, Eren has to consider more aspects. He still needs time. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and support our channel.